Pleasant good evening, Barbados. This is Marcia Weeks, and you are watching the Marcia Weeks Show. We are coming to you live from Barbados. It's 7 p.m. here in Barbados. And um, you know, this is a unusual one. We know we're normally on at Wednesdays at one o'clock, but listen. There is a need. Once there is in there is a need, we're gonna jump on. So I'm gonna ask you already. I see quite a few um persons are on, are logged on, and um, we're gonna ask you um to share. We have lots of business to take care of tonight, so we're gonna ask you to share. This is important Barbados. This is for Barbados. Um, we are aware that others from the other Caribbean islands they normally watch, but tonight it's for Barbados. Barbadians, the question is, is the Barbados government keeping you in the dark? Barbados, wake up. We all know there's no opposition in our government and with a, with a Senate that supports the government. Of course, we have a few independent senators assigned by the same government. It is no wonder the new pension bill and NIS bill will most likely be passed in the Senate on Wednesday. Did you hear that? They are seeking to pass this NIS bill in the Senate on Wednesday. When was the bill introduced? When was it read in Parliament? It was read in Parliament only on Friday. Was it brought to the public? Was it um, put in the, in the official gazette? It was only read in Parliament on Friday. Today is a Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday, a holiday. And then we have two, um, a, a Saturday um, a week um, was weekend, right? So we have weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then holiday on Monday and on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, they're taking it to the Senate, which they already is a Senate that supports the government. You have to ask yourself, where, where does the people factor in and the public factor in? Yeah. The public was not given any serious opportunity to review or analyze the bill. And that's really one of the reasons why we're having this show um, this evening. We're also going to look at that bill, um, you know, a, a, a bit, go into it, pull it apart. We have um, Casual uh, Franklin here with us um, this evening and Maxine McLean will be joining us as well. Yes. Why the rush to pass the bill in the Senate? when there definitely will be no opportunity for public input. As I said earlier, Monday and Tuesday are holidays. And this has been done in the middle of Krapova. And after two public holidays, partying, fets, walking up, everything happening, drinking, Barbadians wake up. Is this deliberate? We're going to put a link um, in the chat section of the show. And I'm going to ask you to um, go ahead and, um, you know, there's going to come a time we're going to ask you, to, you, you're going to be able to come into the show and just to share your views. This is one place you're going to be able to share what, what, what are your views? What's happening? Let your voice be heard. We're still waiting. I'm still waiting on Miss uh, McLean to join us. And while I'm doing that, guys, we're going to hit the, we're going to hit the road running this evening. Okay. Yeah, we're going to hit the road running and I have with me ready to go, Mr. Caswell Franklin. And please share up this live, Barbados. Barbados, share up this live, share up this live. Mr. Franklin is getting ready to come on. This is a time for Barbados to wake up. Barbados, wake up. Barbados, wake up. So we're going to um, invite Mr. Caswell right now. Um, to join to join us. Um, good evening, Mr. Franklin. Good to see you. Good evening, Marcia. Good. It's nice having you uh, here in my house, and I'm in yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, both of us were there resting ourselves on Sunday evening. You know, Sunday evening you have your Sunday lunch, and you just laze around and you rest and so on. What is it that got you off of your couch in front of your TV? or your you know your your ipad or whatever what is it that got you off of your you know your your time of relaxation to be on here with us this evening what's on this, your mind this absolute deception that the government is perpetrating on the people of this country in terms of the pensions 
um, Amendment and the National Insurance um, Amendments. First, let me tell you, right, that if Babylon don't wake up, we will find one day that we don't have any country to, to um, in any country at all. It will be belonging to the Babylon Labour Party and the people who run it. They, you know, there is nothing in this legislation that was necessary or urgent. Mm. I don't understand why you would have something brought to Parliament on a Friday. The normal Parliament today is Tuesday. Mm. You bring the Parliament as though it's an emergency that like you think that something's going to happen like that with COVID. And you rush it through Parliament in all its stages. And they're going to do it in the Senate next week. And that is to deceive people. Now, let me tell you what I'm, why I say this, right? Every, I've, I've studied the, the legislation because it's not very, very long. And when I look at the legislation, the only thing in this legislation that is different from what the National Insurance Board can do right now is to hire staff. That is the only thing. Everything else in this legislation can be achieved under the current legislation except higher staff. Section 11 of the National Insurance and Social Security Act prevents the board from hiring staff. It put that as a civil service function. And there was a reason for that. Errol Barrow, who introduced the National Insurance Scheme, the work excellent Errol Barrow, he decided that the board should concentrate on the investment of the funds and leave mundane things like personal work to the personal professionals. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, the only the only statutory board in Barbados that has this provision is the National Insurance Board, because the National Insurance is a statutory board. They are mm -hmm. changing it from a board to a board. They are trying to trick people, talking about giving it um establishing a a corporate body. National Insurance is already a corporate body, mm -hmm. and it can sue and it can be sued. It isn't like if you sue national insurance, you don't have to sue the attorney general. If, for instance, the ministry have, um, you are, you are, you are well, you, have you, you have to sue the attorney general, not so the national insurance. National insurance is a separate legal entity already. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, oh, they want to be able to do commercial things. Now, if building all those buildings and renting them out isn't commercial, what is? Because if you go to Warren's, just, just a little bit from me here, yeah, you will see a building on the hill where the, you get the ID cards and stuff from. That belongs to National Insurance. National Insurance built that and is renting it to government. Not the government, pretty right. The one and the Warren and Warren Bottom they call um Bob Towers. National Insurance yes. built that and is renting it on to the national to the government. They are building a fire station. No, National Insurance don't need a fire station. So if they're not investing in, in government already and they're not doing commercial things, what is their renting? That's commercial activity. Mm -hmm. But why it can't do other commercial activity, only rent the government? No, they're, 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 they're deceiving us. But they're deceiving so, so, they're decept so, so let me say, let's be clear. So you're saying that the old NIS um, um, bill um, or document um, that governs uh, how the NIS is run, it's not much different. The only thing is um, its ability to employ. Yes, that's um, the only difference that this bill now has that the other one doesn't have. For instance, Section 4 of the National Insurance and Social Security Act says, the board shall be a body corporate, having mm -hmm. perpetual succession and a common seal. That's subsection mm. 1. 2. The board may sue and be sued in its corporate name and may for all purposes be described by such name and upon and service upon the board of any notice, order, or other document of whatsoever kind shall be executed by delivering the same to or send it by resident post addressed to the secretary, the board, at the principal office of the board. Mm -hmm. The board should have the right to acquire and hold real or personal property for the purposes for which the board is constituted and subject to the approval of the minister to dispose of or to charge any property. The it is already a corporate entity. It isn't a normal statutory board, I mean, uh, like a government department that can't operate unless you have the attorney general. It has its own structure already. The mm -hmm. only difference 
is Section 11 of the National Insurance Social Security Act that says, and I will read it for you. Mm -hmm. It says, staff, the minister shall by order under Section 2 of the Civil Establishment Act, Cap 21, establish the offices which shall constitute the offices of the board's establishment, which offices shall for all purposes be deemed to be offices in the public service. Hmm. So, so now it's the minister that is now um, employing. No no, 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 this is the minister of the civil service. This is how you create jobs in the public service. The minister responsible for the public service. Right. Publishes an order. The, it used to be the Civil Establishments Act, but it's not the Public Service Act. Mm -hmm. And you can, you, and the, so the minister determines after the, the department put forward, well, we need people for this amount, that this, this is the salary we want to pay. The, the minister's advisors then tell the minister, okay, it's okay. And the minister signs off. Ministers don't really do any work in that regard. Mm -hmm. The professionals mm -hmm. then go through and say, well, this is, they really need this, or they don't need all these people, or whatever else. And that's how it's, it's supposed to be done. National insurance over the years, even though they had no authority to hire staff, started doing it mm. and paying them. And they don't know how they pay them, but they took the, the, the national insurance money. This must be in, embezzlement for all intents and purposes because if you have no authority to spend money in hiring people and you do that, then you have broken the law. But mm. so, why do you think that, Mr. Franklin? I, I, I you know. This is so important what you're saying, but why do you think that this is now a change in this um, new um, uh, NIS bill? You see, why they want that is that you do, there are certain jobs in the public service that have to have certain qualifications for the, for the, for the particular post. If you don't mm -hmm. have the post, there's something called the public service qualifications order. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have those qualifications, you can't get the job. Now, if I have seen at statutory boards where some person ended up being a general manager and the only thing they left secondary school with was their um, empty lunch box. And they ended up being general, general managers of a statutory board. So because even though you might have qualifications set up for statutory boards, they're not enforceable in law. Mm -hmm. The board could decide, well, oh, I don't mind what the qualifications say. I'm still going to hire these people anyway. Or the minister can call and say, well, look, yeah, I know you got qualifications, but this is my man. Right. So you, you hire him. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that in a government, a government department. So in order to affect that change, the government come up with all this, this ruse. It's a ruse. Mm -hmm. got, but they said here in the legislation that, oh, it, it was set up, it would, um, Set up, commit, set up um, committees. The old, the new, the old legislation said the board can set up committees, uh, whatever committees it thinks fit. So even if you give those committees a name, no, the board could think fit and give it those names. It is exactly. nothing new. So why do you think they are? Uh, because it's very strange. Uh, all I'm saying, it is very strange. It seems like they're, they're keeping us, something they want to keep us in the dark about that they would um you know present it for reading on friday and and uh, by wednesday the next business day they are they are debating it in in the senate which we know it's going to be passed in the senate what do you but think is the reason for this when they have something to hide that's what they do you remember when i was a member of the senate my perpetual complaint was that i didn't i only get this bill this morning or i get it last night and, yes, and they get I remember. At the clock to get to the mm -hmm. house for 11 the next day. And, and my mate was emailed to me at 10 o'clock. Not that I, I actually received that. And, 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 and they complained about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a lot of support from the other senators because, hell, they are appointed by the government and they can't, they can't criticize the government because we criticize the government. The, the prime minister will fire you. Mm. So, 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 so you're 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 saying that you believe there's something that they're trying to hide while they're rushing. We don't know, but is it you're you're thinking that that might be the case. There's something that I want to hide in addition because they have emptied out the national insurance fund for their purposes. Let, let me show you. The national insurance fund is our money. Whoever mm -hmm. contributes, that's our money put down there for our pensions. 
the government is a trustee of that money. Yes. Now you know that if you are a trustee of money and you spent the money not in accordance to how you're supposed to do it, that would be a criminal offense and you will go you will get you will face the court. But fortunately, mm -hmm. the government make the rules. If, if I were the trustee for the national insurance fund and I mm -hmm. did what the government did, I would be in jail now. And they're taking the, the national insurance fund that is not theirs and spend as they like. Now, and, and what is worse, you have a situation where the national insurance don't have a, a say in the, no, we can't give you this money. The minister mm -hmm. overrides everything. Even if the board says no, the minister says no, pay the money. Ah. So, so you don't have a choice. The minister decides that the money will come out. No, but you have a situation where you're borrowing money from me. You are going to dictate the terms that you're going to pay me this money. You're going to tell me what interest payments I will get. And then you can also decide, you know something, I ain't paying it back at all. How is that fair? Mm. And when you do that, there's no recourse. National insurance should have some sort of independent body that will tell the government, no, we can't lend the money, no. So mm -hmm. all you put all these fancy things in place and you still have the minister responsible, you have just spun top in mud. You are going nowhere because the minister can still override the board, still override every, all those other committees and decide, yeah, we can take out your money. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you something, see? A lot of people didn't, don't know this, but I was on a pension committee stuff years ago when the NUPW um, nominated me. I discovered back then in 1989 that the actuaries already determined that the National Insurance Fund will go bust by 2035 if nothing happens, if they don't do some, make some corrective measures. What, what year was that? What year was that? Nin 1989. Mm. Right? So when Oinatha took government in 94, he decided that he's going to do what the last administration didn't do. And he's going to fix that. But he went, out about, he went about it with gusto. He lowered the, the, the amount of money that you will get from your pension. He reduced the, the form, the, he changed the formula. So mm -hmm. then you apply, you will get less pension than a fellow would have gotten under the old formula. Right. He, he increased the contributions. And then he increased the maximum level of contributions, what they call the maximum insurable earnings. And that was supposed to put the National Insurance Fund in good footing. And it was. But when these governments see the money going in, and it looks good, they start taking it out. So, so we now have to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then a whole set of people come in and decide that they're going to give it to their friends lend it out this way and then this last administration this this current administration came in and but on their first acts of treachery to the people of this country they took up the, the money that the board of national insurance to write it off wow over a billion dollars but not only but what is worse national insurance if you fail to pay national insurance money that you collect or ought to have collected it is a criminal offense in Barbados. And you can see the, you can see the inside of a jail for it, but national insurance don't ever do that. They they go at the civil matters and they file um, unpaid certificates against you, which is a, like a judgment in the high court. So you have the judgments in the high court for hundreds of people, and national insurance refuses to publish their names because some of the most prominent people in this society, some people's fathers and all, would be at the top of the list. So they're, mm. they're not publishing these names. I'm not so they, they don't want to publish the names because of who these people are. These people are, and they're all millions. I remember when I, I want the people to see this is why we're saying your government is keeping you in the dark, guys. They're keeping you in the dark, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> Continue, yeah. Mr. Uh, a few a few years Martin. ago, I went to the registration department and I sat down behind those big books, taxes and national insurance books. And I total up the principal or not the principal or interest just the principal and when they got to two billion dollars they got, get tired and i gave up the ghost but but it's well in excess of two billion dollars 
that the, and then the government turned around and wrote it off. You remember when the government wrote off all these things? Yeah. They wrote it off. It, it, this is money that people, and I think it's VAP. NIS, money that you collected from people. And then the government says, look, if you to keep it. They decide to keep it. And, you know, you know, this is why we say Barbados wake up, because even from the time that that happened, there should have been noise in this country because we put them there. The people put them there, you know, and they, they went ahead, wrote it off and now come with all of these different, um, you know, um, things that they're trying to do and do it quickly. That's it. That's the thing about it. I, I, I have uh, Miss McLean that's who's going to come on. Is there? Um, I know you. You have a lot more. We're going to give you some more time. But um, tell us another area of the of the the new bill that is concerning you. Well, I want to tell you about the the other bill. If you pension. Don't mind. Yes. The other, yeah, the pension bill because this is the biggest scandal in this country now, and people don't realize it. In 1989, the, the pension age for parliamentarians was 55. Mm -hmm. Those people lowered it, and then went, and then lowered it for themselves to 50. Yeah. And and, and then took <laughs> the nasty the civil service thing up to 60, 67. While they were taking theirs down, they were kind of biases up. All right? So right now, an MP will get a pension 18 years before a non-MP. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? Explain, explain that one to me. I don't understand because I don't think, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a lay person. Explain what you just said to me there because I that, that doesn't make sense what you just said. Members You're telling me that an MP uh-huh members Go of ahead. parliament qualify for a pension under their legislation at age 50 five zero mm -hmm. right it, and these same people who get their pensions at 50 turn around last week friday this friday a couple of days ago and decided that everybody else should get their pension at 68. <laughs> Okay, the 18 years, 50 and 68, mm. 18 years. And, mm. and 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 what what are Barbadians saying about guys? Let me hear your thoughts about that in the in the chat there. I, I remember in Jamaica, you remember they gave themselves over a hundred percent increase. Um the, the government there and I I you know <laughs> up to the prime minister to give give back his. So we want to know what what is Barbados going to do? That was Jamaica. Let's hear about about Barbados. What you want to tell me 18 years? Yeah, but, but also, I can, I can jump between legislation because they qualify in eight years for half their salary as their pension. You have to serve eight years, two terms or eight years, whichever is the greater work. And you get half of your salary. Currently, a civil servant, before the, these new changes come in, currently, right now, a civil servant has to serve it to serve 10 years to qualify for one fifth of his pay, of his salary while they're serving it to get half oh lord now you're giving me pure jokes today man it, it, jokes it, gets worse. it gets worse marcia you hear people talk about i serve my 33 and a third uh-huh that is that is the that's bigger the, the maximum pension in the, as a public officer 33 and a third years MPs get their full pension at 12 years. I, what you, <laughs> no, hold a what? minute. What, what, what is this? What is going on here, people? Barbados, Barbados, Bajans, no man. No yeah, man, Bajans, no man, Bajans. Listen, uh, it's no wonder, it's no wonder they're doing this all the time and people were doing all, people walking up and drinking and all kinds of things to this, the people to, totally distracted because, Bajans, no, Bajans can't let this pass. This no, give you, a you jump up and think and you forget all about it. You jump up and forget it. You walk up and it gone out your head. <laughs> you know, Rex Nettleford. Yes. He said, he's a Jamaican professor at the University of West Indies. He said, when the slave ships came over the Atlantic, the first port of call was Barbados. And the planters here took off the most docile slaves. 
And as they went up the islands, the people got the the, the, the most docile, but they get to them. And eventually, when they get to Jamaica and Haiti, they had only the rebels left. So to this day, <laughs> Barbados was still made was Barbados was still made good slaves. We, we, we were bred from good slaves. No, but you know, you know, I I tend to I used to believe that you know I used to believe that Mr. Caswell, I'm um, Franklin, and I and and after a couple of years living here, I, I've changed that. I see that when when you really when they begin to understand Barbadians are people who they they use their brain a lot. You know, as Jamaicans, we jump off at everything, but they sit down and they think. And this is why we're going through using this 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 method to go through the show. You've had your notes and you were a senator. It's not just anybody off the streets is speaking. You were a senator, an independent senator. We have Miss McLean, who was a senator um, as well in, in um, here in Barbados. So we have people who are going to sit down and educate you. And if after we have educated you, I can't see Barbadians sitting down and letting this happen. That's not, I don't, I really don't think Barbadians are passive. I think a lot of times is that once they understand it, they're going to move. That's what I think. That's really what I think. And I, I want to believe that. <laughs> Look, the last time we had any rebellion in Barbados, a guy from Trinidad came here and started it, Clement Payne. Before then, Bassa and African. We have not had a Barbadian who stood up and <laughs> represented our people. Everybody in Barbados is scared about everything else. So <laughs> check it out. Nobody, no, unless we get somebody from outside the government, this, this government will do it. And they know that. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not going to believe that. I, I believe that I, I, I have, I, I'm really, really washing my mind of that thought that Barbados, Barbadians are passive. Um, I, I don't really believe that. I believe that once education happens and once Barbadians understand, um, it is my belief, Mr. Franklin, that they're going to stand up. Jamaica just stood up to their MPs, and I believe, come on, Barbados, I know it's going to happen here. Um, I Please don't go because I want to, um, you know, people are going to ask a lot of questions. I want to bring in Ms. McLean at this moment. And I also um, have, I see coming in is Winston Clark. I see Lynette Eastman um, on the, um, on, on as well. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link. Um, Lynette, check your WhatsApp message, Lynette Eastman. And um, I would love for you to come on at some point as well. All right. Mm hmm so I would love for you to come on. But let me just welcome Miss McLean, a uh, former senator. I can't remember the years that she um, served um, as Minister of Foreign Affairs as well. Yes? What were the years? Um, on mute, please, Miss McLean. Let me help, see if I can help you. Go I got ahead. it. I got it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I was saying to you, well, good evening and good evening to my, my brother in cooperation, Caswell. Hey, Matt. Say long time no see. Long time no see, but I hear you. Um, uh, and, and thank you for having me. I was listening um, to, to, to the discussion, but you know, the more you listen, but I'm not, I am a pensioner, let me say, but we can visit, revisit that. But I, I and, and it was 10 years and four months it was casual that I would have qualified for a pension. But anyhow, yeah. um, we can discuss that issue, and I think it is something that will be discussed. But I, Marcia, when you spoke to me, I really got concerned about the process because I, I think Caswell was dealing a lot with the content. And mm -hmm. as you were speaking, and as he was speaking, I was looking at the ministerial statement on revitalization of the national insurance scheme. And so I want to say something a process and Caswell can probably help help me help people to understand if they don't follow. On Friday, we had a debate on two pieces of legislation, mm -hmm. um, the national insurance um, amendment, as well as the pensions amendment. Both of them relate to pensions. But the interesting thing about it, as I delved into this, because the truth is I, I was not at home most of Friday to follow the debate. And by the time I got home, the thing had finished. So I'm not sure how long the process took to debate these. I want to emphasize in relation to process that when I started to listen back to the, um, the parliamentary recording of this, the parliament's recording of it, I heard Minister Strong say that 
in doing the two bills, they were going to engage in what is called a cognate debate, which is really a single debate. And mm -hmm. oftentimes what happens is almost there's a condensation or a, re a, re a reduction in the contribution of the person because they consider them to be similar and they're not given the same kind of treatment as if they were debated separately. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the first thing. So in essence, that kind of would have shortened the debate um, Friday afternoon, just before yeah. two bank holidays and so on. The second thing was that after agreeing to do this, I went and I pulled up the two pieces of legislation and went through them and compared them with what I heard. Caswell was talking about the um, changes, because if you read the legislation, the first one I'm going to touch on both, but if you read the legislation, um, the, 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 um, the one relating to national insurance, um, that, that, that largely address the administrative restructuring of, of the, the scheme. I think they're dropping the word scheme and using service. I don't see any reference to any of that in the ministerial statement. So I don't know if the minister spoke beyond that to that separately, but all I was hearing today on the radio, for example, and Caswell can confirm this because I believe he was on the program. I heard him when I joined, I think I heard his voice and so on speaking to it. They were talking about the changes in, in benefits and, and contributions and qualification years and so on. So in essence, a lot of what was in the bill was not even discussed. So I really, in, in relation to the first one, and then you had the second one, and I don't get the sense that there was significant discussion about that. And that concerns me because in the statement, the minister talks about consultation widely, etc. And my question is, consultation before the bill is put out there and nobody has a chance to read it because the other thing i want to point out in terms of process if you look at the the, the standing orders of of the of the of the house of assembly it says and i quote and if this is not a a, a current edition is what i found online it says no bill shall be read a second time until it has been printed and circulated to members and has been published in the official gazette now the official gazette is available online it is it is there's a there's a site controlled by the government printing department mm -hmm. and i checked around 4 45 i made a note at the time and i went back a second time and when i checked this evening there was no leg the legislation relating to the national insurance was not there so the first question I have to ask is, was proper parliamentary procedure followed? Ah, um, so hold a minute there. Hold a mm -hmm. minute there. So you're saying that it was um, read in parliament on Friday, mm -hmm. um, and um, but there was no, uh, um, and it is going to be debated on Wednesday right. in the Senate, and there was nothing put in the, in the official, official gazette. gazette. Right. And, and that's, that's a requirement it. according to the standing orders from what I read for the House of Assembly. OK, so you are looking, Miss McLean is here and she's looking at procedures and I'm stopping you uh, and, and, and because I'm I'm a lay, I take it. I'm a lay person. I've never been in the Senate. Mm -hmm. You've been in the Senate and, and Mr. Franklin has been in the Senate and you're saying that the proper protocol was not followed. So that's important. They, yeah. people, people are taking notes. They say, wait, they tell me, Marcy, I'm taking notes. So, so that's that's something to take. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, but so that's what I'm saying that when my understanding and, and I went to the standing orders of the house that are that are um, on online, what I was able to see online. And that's why I said unless they have changed, there's a requirement that it be, be published in the official gazette and publication would include online publication. And it wasn't there. My question to my my to Mr. Franklin to Caswell is what are the or to anybody for that matter? What are the implications of proceeding in this manner? when when you are seeking to pass legislation what's the status of it if you have not followed procedure so so that's one thing the other thing of course is when you then put the, the two pieces of legislation together the other one being the pensions amendment um mm -hmm. i i i am not sure they, that what exactly would have been dealt with that because again what i what i heard from minister strong i think he would have been leading on that he you know his focus well he did make the point that there were was a cognitive cognitive cognate debate sorry and mm -hmm. and you know there wasn't a lengthy 
from what I can see, discourse on, on what the implications of that. And even if there were, the piece of legislation, I think, is something that needs significant consultation with, with the public service. And my question um, to, to Caswell as a trade union is, what has been the situation in relation to that legislation? Um, um, Mr. Franklin, have you, you heard what um, Ms. McLean yes, was? Yes, yeah. I have you this, sorry. I can, I can answer that by telling you the major trade unions in Barbados are, are, are now all controlled by the Barbados Labour Party. So they don't matter to them. Trust me when I tell you so. You mm -hmm. have, not every Barbados Labour Party function, that you have public function, you see the president of NUPW up front, saying not up there at anything. And of course, Tony Moore, John Secretary of BWU, is an MP, BLP MP. What do you expect? They don't, mm -hmm. they don't consult with me until it's too late because recently we, we were going to take action at the airport and somebody leaked that we were taking action and then they got a call the same evening asking for an urgent meeting. And we had a meeting the same day they were having the funeral from Sir Lloyd. Because the rush, because we're going to have the, 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 the demonstration the Monday morning, so they want to make sure we don't have that. So that's when I started getting consultations over the airport issue. I might have to start taking action over these. Mm. But there was a, 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 a strange type of people. They don't stand up for each other, they don't stand for themselves. Mm, mm. Yes. Yeah, so I think Mars here. Yes, go I, ahead. I, I, I was saying that I think the, the, the con my concern with, with the two these two pieces of legislation, um, let me repeat again, in relation to the national insurance, that the bulk of the bill, because if, let me see if I can see it on my system and, and, and read it here for you. I had it. Um, one of the things that it said, basically, it, it covered, it says here the bill would, and this is, um, amend the law related to the system of national insurance and social security by establishing a body corporate to administer the system and perform the functions relating to national insurance and social security hitherto administered and performed by the Department of National Insurance and provide for related matters. Now, the, the, the big explanation there in the bill is the, the whole process of re, re, reorganizing structurally the, 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 you know, the thing in terms of how it is managed and, and Caswell went through those things in detail. And then you have a, a four words which says provide for related matters. Now, in looking at this and, and going through these, the, the amendments, the related matters are substantial, um, and I think they are touched on in in the in the ministerial statement. But the other part of it, the bill would have been a, would, would have passed in Parliament to go forward. But I don't see evidence. I mean, and somebody can correct me. I I, I don't know if the entire debate is covered. I was trying to pull it up. I didn't have a lot of time in terms of when when we had a conversation about my agreeing to to be part of the show. Um, the, the bulk of the thing wasn't discussed in Parliament in, in any substantive way. And that Ooh. is critical because I think Caswell pointed out hiring practices, for example. Um, yes, for a long time, there was this um, kind of anomaly where the, the, the board operated as a board in some respects, but these persons were um, hired and, and probably remunerated as like the public service but if you're making a significant change which will have implications for for not only the day-to-day -day running but all aspects of the operation shouldn't that be something shared with the public in a way that one they can get a significant amount of debate and discussion in parliament and before you get to parliament should people not be able to scrutinize the bill is wanting to say you consulted but my assumption is you didn't consult and, and they will have to correct me if I'm wrong, they didn't consult on a draft bill. They consulted about an issue or a set of issues. Mm, I and see. They put bill. Now, if I am wrong, somebody can come quickly and say to us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she is wrong. But if you are consulting to inform the bill, when you get to the draft of the bill and you have it there, should you then present that for further scrutiny to see if the discussions... Um, that you right. had, you know, the contributions that you had, if yes. those things fed into the bill. So, the bill. Know, I, would that be the reason why they would have the official gazette that people are able to see what precise. is there? But but in yeah. this instance, Barbados, um, as, up until 4.45 this evening, Miss McLean is saying she checked and it was not there. 
if anybody has any other information, please, 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 because we want to speak truth. You, you forward that to us. But up until this evening, the bill that is going to be, um, you know, be presented in, debated in the Senate on Wednesday was not yet put in the official gazette. Um, I and what, see what, I, what I was able to do, sorry, Marcia, because I yes. like to be complete. What I was able to do, because I understand, and Caswell did make the point that he, and I heard him on multiple occasions complain that he would have only gotten sight of a piece of legislation probably after entering the Senate or just before going into the Senate. Now, because I know that I know something about the Parliament's website, I went there and Parliament's website is not the official gazette. You understand? It is not the official mm -hmm. gazette. It was mm -hmm. there. I would have to go now and, and go back and see when that was posted there, but I'm sure it would have been posted there so that the members of Parliament could also have access to it. But Right. But remember, all the, I, members of, the members of Parliament are all on the, of the same party, so you don't have, you won't have a robust debate um, yeah, but because but the they're other all thing the is, same party. That is true because I, I, I suggest you go and have a look at the, the 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 seats, the vacant seats in Parliament when Mr. Mr. Strong was speaking, um, and I think his speech would have been about forty-five minutes or so. Forty-five and minutes. You're saying that you didn't even have the full complement of the thirty of them there to yeah, debate. I don't, I, you might have had a quorum because you have to have a quorum to continue the sitting. But I am uh -huh. saying that for an issue as important as this, when when I started to listen to him, and you can go and check the numbers there were many persons missing. So, so you know, it, it is almost as though it was not an important, or not it, there were two pieces of legislation, legislation, those pieces of legislation weren't important. And I'm saying, yes, they, and it is so much more critical for the public to hear the voices of the members of parliament in the absence of the voices of an a, a opposition in the parliament itself, you know, and, and, and for something which is going to touch the lives of, of all working people in Barbados, because if you're a public servant, the bill relating to um, to, to 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 that is important. Before I forget, Marcy, I want to ask I want to ask a question of of Mr. Franklin Caswell. Can you help me understand the 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 issue when 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 a civil a public officer, because it talks about a public officer joining. Um, with the, with, the, with the contribution to pension applying to public officers um, who joined the service from January, I think it's January 1st, 2024. Mm -hmm. The question I want to know is, in the case of, in the civil service, let me put it this way, in the civil service, you have persons who are appointed, you have persons who are temporary and maybe temporary for many years, um, and now you have a new feature which is running across a wide and wider spectrum of the public service people on contract. If a person is, when I'm trying to understand the pension arrangements as it applies to a appointed versus temporary person, is there a difference? That's the essential thing I'm trying to understand. There, there was once, mm -hmm. then we now have to change that in 1998. Mm -hmm. But if you were temporary or not, you got your pension under the same legislation and the same terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. This new amendment will see people coming in after the 1st of January. If you are not appointed, you will not get your pension. No, so what went after what I went after rolled back in 1998, these have no re, 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 re instituted because the legislation speaks to if you are appointed to a substantive post. This amendment here. So if you in the old days, if you were working in public service, many times I know you had to get you had the people on their deathbed, you had to go and get them to sign something quick or get a, a, an emergency thing to appoint them so that they can get the pension because people have forgotten them. Why not to change all of that? So let me let me see if I can confirm I what you let me see if I understand exactly. So if I if I I started my work life at, as a clerical officer in the welfare department, child care board. If I were in that situation of working for the last six or seven years in a temporary position. Um, come January, and I'm, okay, January 20, 2024, I am still temporary. 
what applies to me in relation to this 5% contribution? I will argue because the, the, the pension act says when you enter the service, it doesn't say appointed. Okay, even when you enter. Enter, even, even though they interpret it as being appointed. Okay. Because if you have pensionable service, and then you are not pensionable, it does not make sense. But then civil servants do what they feel like. The mm -hmm. This new legislation, however, that says you must be appointed. So if you're not appointed, you're not going to get any pension. So, and sorry. I am glad you talk about the, the arrangements with contract people and stuff. That is another scandal. People on contract are not entitled to pension and they get 20% of their gross as a gratuity mm -hmm. in lieu of pension. Mm -hmm. If you sit down next to a guy in the, in the department, he's on contract and you are not, he carries home at the end of the year 20% more money than you. That 20% was supposed to be put down in the savings for you, but no, no administration has ever done so. No, they're saying that, uh, that the, the IMF audited the, 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 the government pension fund that is an absolute lie. There's no, there's, there's no scheme. There's no pension scheme. Mm. You're paying for current revenues. So when they are selling it to the country and saying, oh, that the IMF audited this pension scheme, the government pension scheme, that is a lie. I challenge anybody to show me a document that sets out the government pension scheme. There is none. But they, they audited something that was not there. They lied to the country. I'm giving them the impression that give the pressure or that be virtual audit and the audit make us do these things. It is not true. You know, but of course we believe anything that they say when they say in parliament because parliamentarians don't, especially this group don't like. So the question I have Marcia coming out of this because yeah. I think we focus a lot and 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 for example um the, the, the information I see moving around some people spoke about the NIS um, and those are important issues, but as I say, both relate to pensions and it covers all workers in Barbados across, across the private and public sector. Mm -hmm. The question, therefore, is that we have to ask the government, can you say to Barbadians, and more especially to public servants, what will be the situation facing employees in, in the public sector because, and, and I'm going to touch on something and complicate it a little more in a second, because if you have, you have three categories of workers in the, in the, what we call the civil service, the direct public, you know, the ministries, etc. You have persons who have been appointed to positions. You have persons who have been appointed, well, more than three categories, but these are some of the situations. You have persons mm -hmm who have been appointed and acting in higher positions. You have persons who are just temporary and have mm -hmm. never been quote unquote appointed. And then you have persons now in different levels on contract. Now I, I will complicate it a little further. What will be the situation of statutory corporations and, and, com and companies owned by government that are, you know, so in essence, one of the, what, what really, when I started to look at this and think about it, it said to me, this is not a simple one size fit all situation, or it, it's going to play across the board and, and easy to understand. So the question I have, because I have to confess that I have not seen, I was not able um, to go and look to see who else other than the ministerial statement and what um, Minister Strong said, who else spoke on this. Um, and I wasn't listening to the debate. I wasn't home much on Friday to listen to the debate anyhow. But the question is, has, has any of this been touched and explained to the public by, by the minister, by the other members of parliament, have they actually, can they t show us somewhere that we can go and understand? And I, I raise this because we get these things happening, then you have to pause, you have to stick a pin, you have to pull back and 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 and, and try to, to redo and, and, you know, and to re-examine mm -hmm. and re-explain or whatever, because, because we're rushing, applies, we're rushing. Same, you know, the same thing applies to, to, to the whole notion of contracts. Up to now, I can't find something which helps me to understand the implications of the issuing of contracts in the public service and how it how it impacts on different levels, different types of contracts and so on. All I'm suggesting is that these things touch on some very complex issues 
and a, and a, and a, and a, what I would describe as a very tepid debate, if you can, can call it that, on Friday does not cut it and saying that you consulted widely almost as insult to injury because if people took the time to share with you, how is that reflected in the debate that took place? Uh, I'll tell you something, though, you know, um, you just hit on something. The statutory boards are also covered in this legislation. The, it, this was a pension, Pensions Miscellaneous Provisions Act. So it, at one time it amended the Pensions Act for Public Servants, it amended the Statutory Board Pensions Act, it amended, it amended the Teachers Pensions Act, it amended all of them at one time. So everybody's going to be hit with the same thing. But what happens here? Civil servants since 19, 1st September 1975, once they are... Um, when they, once they reach age six, the, by the pension age, because they're like changing now, mm -hmm. when they reach the national insurance pension age, their pension from the treasury is reduced by the amount of money that you get from national insurance. Now, you are asking the civil servants now to pay for a pension that the national insurance age and the government retirement age is going to be the same thing, so you're going to get a pension. You're not going to get any pension. You're going to get, you will, you will get a maturity, but you will not get any pension going forward. Because Can you repeat that? Repeat that. I think that that is that is important. Someone actually sent something like that to me, but I was trying to understand it. Just repeat that so that the average person can understand it, Mr. Okay. Franklin. Since 1970, if you join the public service after the 1st of September 1975, the pension you get from the government service, from the Treasury, is reduced by the amount of pension you get from national insurance. Well, the national insurance pension is usually higher for people who earn below the maximum insurable earnings. So that means the majority civil service. So when, when, the, it is, when the reduction is applied, when you get the national insurance, it works out the pension from the treasury. So if the retirement age in the government is the same as the retirement age at national insurance, and the yeah. pension is national insurance, all will happen together. So you will get no pension. You will pay for it, but you will not get any. Oh my and God. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't understand how deceitful and dangerous these people are. But and, and the thing is, Belgians gave them 30 seats. So I believe that Belgians wanted this behavior, wanted to be treated this way. And they gave them twice. So, so, so the, the, right now, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was complaining all along, so I can't really put me in there with them. But yes. They, they, they are tricking you. They are deceiving you. You will get no pension. The pension will be reduced as soon as you qualify for it. Marcy, I want to be, I think that we need to explore this a little bit more because Caswell is explaining what a lot of people don't understand. No, no, you mentioned the gratuity. Let's let's look at what currently obtains in the public sector because I think this is this is the, the government is the single largest employer in the country, and therefore the impact of this will uh, will have a, sig a significant impact on. The largest group of, of workers and you know single group of workers if you want so describe them right now a, a civil servant does not contribute they pay national insurance right and I, i'm just trying to walk through how the pension is calculated and who finances it you pay national insurance and then government pays you because i know most civil servants you will hear them say i'm gonna take a gratuity and a smaller pension. Mm -hmm. the, the gratuity is not paid by national insurance, is it? Is that, how, how, how does it work? Explain that. For, if, for the gratuity me. is actually, what, what happens? Mm -hmm. They calculate what your pension would be. Mm -hmm. When they work that out, they take one quarter of that amount, what your annual pension would be, mm -hmm. and multiply it by 12.5. The reason mm -hmm. for that, we're back in 1947 when this thing was started, that people used to live 12 and a half years after retirement. 55 okay. used to be the retirement age. Mm -hmm. So by 67, you'd have gone. I would lost, I would be dead. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what they did, they give you, they take a quarter of your pension. Mm -hmm. And they can multiply by 12.5 and they give you that as their maturity. Okay. That will help fix the house, you know, change the mm -hmm. rules and stuff. So they will live in comfort until you're dying there. Mm -hmm. The remaining three quarters, they divide that in 12 and give you that monthly. Right. However, 
if you come into the service after the 1st of September 1975, when the national insurance kicks in, you that pension now will cease and you will only get for national insurance if you were work if you are one of the people who work right now at the, the, the camp number is five thousand if you work for less than five thousand one twenty dollars a month that's almost everyone in public service you know so so the vast majority of the public service will not get a pension from the treasury even now when you pay for it you wow see, the is, what has what what people didn't understand that the your salary in the public service was always both less than what you should have gotten for your qualifications and stuff. And that amount was supposed to be saved for mm -hmm. you as a, def a deferred earnings mm -hmm. pension. So when people say that the civil service didn't contribute to their pension, they did contribute because they were they were being paid less than they should have been paid. Okay, gotcha. And now they're wow. saying, oh, you, you don't you don't pay. So that was that's as a matter of fact to show you what I mean. If you are a public officer and somebody wants to stick on you to their business, that person has to pay the treasury 25% of your salary to maintain your pension. Hmm. Right? So they got to pay 25%. So that 25% should have been put down there for you all along. It was never put down for you because government, you know, don't always have the money. Yeah, sure, yeah. So they um mm -hmm. so, so rather than put it down, they just went the ahead and just left it and pay from current revenue. So to say that civil servants didn't um, contribute to their pension, they, they, they contributed because they were paid less. Ah, paid, I see. Mm -hmm. You see, they were, they were paid less, mm -hmm. and then that money was supposed to be saved for them. Mm -hmm. And government honored it until mm -hmm. these people come around right. the place now and said, well, look, we're going to treat people. But anyhow, they cared. But, but you know you know what this is this this just just what i mean i'm watching the chat and this as someone is saying this has to be done again because people are just a lot like myself i have to be honest it's not a topic that i know very much about and 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 i'm learning so much tonight and i'm saying this is why we needed to have that public um discussion and understanding people understand what what you know what this is all about because it affects us all everybody it affects us all let, let me let me just um um bring mr clark in um because we're going to get into um having people to come on and to share their views and to ask questions etc um before i open the floor to you guys again you are the professionals here you are two senators and we'll be able to give us some you know clear understanding of this issue but um uh, mr um clark um, he's a paralegal and also represents the people, um, you know, and um, I know he has something that he wants to say on that. Well, welcome, Winston. Um, good to Hello, have you. Good night. Yes. Oh, good night. Uh, thank you. For Hi. Having me. Hi. Good night. Hi, good night. All right. Um, I, I will not try, even try to reiterate what Mr. Franklin and Mr. McQueen spoke about. What I will speak about, though, is the surreptitious way the government went about implementing this bill, all right? And um, they spoke about consultation, but whom did they consult with? They continue to speak about transparency. Where was the transparency? Because I, I, I never heard about any consultation, all right? And I'm before, I, I, I am always online with the Gazette. As a matter of fact, you and I spoke about this earlier this evening, and I, and I went online and there is nothing about that bill in the Gazette, relative, relative to the pensions, et cetera. Now, to, to just have the sitting on Friday, which, which is not the norm, because they usually sit on Tuesday, and I believe Capital said this, and Senate is usually on Wednesday, then to have this crop over, this crop over festivities, and then the Senate sit on Wednesday, to, to obviously, and as Ms. McQueen said, have a tepid um, debate because we know it's uh, already a foregone conclusion. They're going to pass it. There's no opposition, so to speak. You understand? But the thing about it is I am so upset about it because a lot of people are not going to live to see a pension. I'm going to be realistic. They are not going to live to, to ever receive a pension. 
So all those years will go for naught. And it is time that Barbadians, and I know I've been getting this consistently on my chats, it is time that Barbadians stand up. France stood up when Macron did this, and this, and everything stood to stand still. It's time that Barbadians come out, even if they do not, they say, well, listen, let's, for one day, and show this government that we have a say and that they work for us and it's not the other way around. All right, because nobody, 68 years. As far as the NIS scheme, etc., I leave that in the hands of um, Caswell and Miss McLean, right? Because um, I'm aware that there wasn't much change, so to speak. All right, I haven't had a chance to completely read the, the bill. But um, I've just seen a skim of it, okay? But as far as the pension, the pension is what we are really worried about. If you look at the comments and you listen to the people, you listen to the chats, yes. you will see that people are that's, really worried. That's worrying. where, that's where they, they are mostly, they're mostly concerned about that. And, um, you about. know, it's, it's, it's um, um, you know, it's very, very, it, it, it's, it's, to me, it is, I just can't even find the word to 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 say to say that you want to be transparent and and talking about um you know um you know you, you want to make sure that you have you know people having a stay etc. And you're going to come read a bill on Friday and then um you're going to take it to the Senate to debate on Wednesday. It's not um in you know in the public sphere for people to look at it. Um, we have a holiday. We can't discuss it on brass tacks. We can't do anything because you gave us a holiday. You plan out this whole thing. It seems like it appears as though this is planned out. We must wind up and we must walk up and we must drink and 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 we and, and we then get we get up on what Wednesday and and we don't even realize what happened. You know, this is what it's coming over to me. But um, thank you so much um for your comments, um, Winston. Just just thank hang you. on there in the green room. Let me see, Mr. Jamal Forsyth is coming in, um, because this is the point where we're asking people to come in and have your say. Come in and have a say. Okay, we can't keep you for too long. Okay, we're not going to keep you for too long, but you're going to come in and have your say go right out so somebody else can come in. Okay. One second, Dominic. Okay. I yes, think so Mr. now yes, someone someone ahead, asked Mr. me. Mr. Foresight. Yes, ma'am. Um, someone asked me what what would be the rule awakening. The rule awakening would be for the Barbadian public to stand up to these charlatans because this is blatant madness. Now, what Mr. Franklin was saying earlier is quite true because when you qualify for the for the pension age, apparently it disappears because my father had worked in the Bridgestone port and and upon retirement he took a very long time to even receive or even hear anything about pension or anything like that so what he's saying is quite true it is not lies people need to stand up to this madness and stop this foolishness it is they are living under pretense and and it's a false hope saying oh this person is auntie and uncle no 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 how is it legal for someone to tell you or government therefore then to tell you that it is illegal not to pay nis but at the same said time it is it is legal for them to take the money from you that's not that 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 that, that is that is that is lunacy that is lunacy mm -hmm. you know and no one is standing up to this madness no one is any monsters i'm not saying that you should run board the, the the government and burn it down i'm not saying that what i'm saying is is that if the people stand up to these to 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 the uh to the leaders and tell them, listen, we've had enough. We are the ones that put yes. you here. You understand? These things will come to a cease. It will it will bring cessation. It will it yeah. will have to cease. Because there is no way that these things can continuously go on for years and years. And look at the time that they did it. The last time they brought in legislation, legislation, they bought it and they snuck it in. And now they're sneaking a loot a new legislation in right right at the time of crop over. Many people yeah, are and, dancing and, and, and they, they, were, they were they were debating two bills, two important bills, all in one, and and then um, days okay, later, then. now they want to pass it in the Senate, and those are the things that I believe that we need to. Um, I agree with you. We have and got to let them know we're not accepting it. 
and it has not been made public notice. It is not in the National Gazette. It is not there for the for the uh, for, for the white public to see. Why is it being hidden? Why is it you being know? hidden? That is a Why thing. is it that being hidden? The, the people are not wondering what what are what are the implications for the future. They are not securing the future for the for the younger generation. It is madness. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Foresight. Lots of no foresight. Problem. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, um, the link is there. I'm going to put the link in again. Um, okay. Thank you, Jamai. I'm going to put the link in and ask you guys to come in. Let your voice be heard. You don't even have to put on your camera. Okay. Nice, the, yeah. drink, the drink is going to say stream yard. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Franklin. And there's a question Sherry Blackman has there. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Franklin. Um, I, Mr. spoke about consultation. I have consultations. I can confess that they invited me. Well, I don't know if they call it invitation. I got a letter from the Permanent Secretary Ministry of Labor saying, thanks for agreeing to serve on this committee. You know? But that was the first time I knew that I agreed. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I saw that letter, I realized, yeah, hell, Caswell, you just you agreed to something. I was probably sleepwalking. So I took offense to it. So, of course, when they invited me to me, I didn't turn up because you just can't assume that you're going to thank me for, uh, and I'm going to just rush in there. But then the director of national insurance called me and said, I missed two meetings. And I said, well, okay, can you give me the documents? I will, I will still come, but give me the documents so that I can review them before I, I can. No, they can't give me the documents. I will get them when they get there. So you are going to ask me to come to a meeting to consult about something. And don't let me know what it is. That's what the consultation, that's not, that's, so mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the other trade union leaders rush in and when they do that, I have more respect for myself than that. I didn't go because you refused to give me any documentation till I get there when everybody had them already. Rodden had them, everybody had them, but not me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and as Miss McLean said, you might have consulted, um, you, you know, you met, um, before because on their website, they said they spoke with, um, you know, different, um, you know, types of people in society, etc. The point is when you have the draft bill, um, that draft bill now would need to, you need to take it back to those people and to, you know, and, and, and it needs, you need to follow procedure. Uh, you know, be conscious of the fact that there's no opposition in this country and make sure that the public has some kind of say in what happens. I think that that, that is um, that is important. But there's a question here. I'm going to be six yes. or seven next year. Cheryl will get her pension. Cheryl is going to have a pension. It doesn't she will get her pension. And so, and she sorry, go ahead, Caswell. She will get her pension. If she qualifies, that means that if she has been in public service, for 10 years or more, temporary or appointed, doesn't really matter right now. And she's reached 67, yeah, she will get her pension. If she's talking about the national insurance thing, if she has the 500 contributions, yes, she will get her pension. The problem there with, the, with, the, with this thing is that the new people now were gonna have to have 750 contributions, 14.4 14, 14. years. They call it 15, it's 14.4 years. So you're not qualifying. You're not asking these people to qualify in 14 years when the same MPs are qualifying in eight. They can't sit down and do that and hold a straight face. No, mm. they, they, they're saying we're in this together. That may not be the body you're here. Mar they Marcia, um, could I, so that other people understand, I, I went to the, to the minister's speech and I think I will share this so that people, based on what, on the fifth page of the, of the, um, the speech he said, um, the the pension of age is now 67, making the current difference between average years lived and retirement age 11 years. The measure therefore recommended here is a one-year rise of the pension age in two steps. In 2028, the pension age will become 67 and a half years. In 2034, the pension age becomes 68 years. Um, but I, I, I heard him, the question was posed, and I would say it, can, it would only be fair that I, if we adjust this, that they relook re the pensions um, going forward for, for MPs as well. I mean, if adjustments are made, adjustments are made. If when, mm -hmm. if when there increases the pension or whatever that is the case um, and they get it, then you need to look and see how this, how this you know, you have to adjust it, taking everybody into consideration. That's, that's my position on that. 
Mm-hmm. So, 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 um, is it that they're planning to do that, Mr. Franklin? Are they planning to adjust it for the MPs, and it's not um, yet ready? I heard Minister Colin Jordan today on Brass Talk saying, "Oh, that <laughs> the Prime Minister said something to that effect." You know, they're not planning anything yet. It, it, they, they were just they, they were thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. So so hold a minute. So they they didn't um <laughs> so this in this bill that they're putting, there's nothing in there for the parliamentarians. That's the, no, the, the parliamentarians have a different piece of legislation. Um return ah. along this legisl legislative service act. I see. So they 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 say they're thinking about it. So this is where Bajans come in. Bajans, you need to let it be more than they're thinking about it, that this is something that they have to do. This is this is where Barbadians have to rise up and say, "Listen, the, this you're not just going to think about it, okay? This is something that has to has to happen." I agree with Miss McLean that, and it's right here what you were saying right there on the screen that they that that they would need to look at look at that as well. Um, guys, can you you see the if you see the link there? Those that are watching, thank you for everybody who is watching. Um, um, we have almost 500 persons on tonight watching. Um, I'm going to ask you, come guys, you don't have to show your, your face. All right. You don't have to put on your camera, but this is an opportunity. Let your voice be heard. Let your, I don't believe that Bajans are passive. I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that this is a, this, you're a people of action and something you you got to do something you know let's talk about it you have a question to ask ask the question make sure you understand it so that when you're ready to to, to take your actions you know what 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 you're doing in the meantime um go ahead mr franklin it seems like you want to say something yes i it is it is not on the pensions or the national insurance anybody want to show you how bad how the government is behaving you, you realize the airport they have this ppp thing going on right and they're mm -hmm. saying oh that they're they're now discussing this pp to have this ppp they signed it recently and and they will work out the details of a contract mm -hmm. i do not believe that for a minute i can tell you why the arabs already have their man working in barbados at the airport he's he's petrick voyeur the of the operations the director of operations they brought him in and stuck him in the vehicle force at the airport. No advertising, no nothing. He comes from, he was working, if you look at his website, he was in Abu Dhabi and wherever else working. They brought him here to oversee what the transition. I know the government is working backwards to put contracts and things in place. They already got their man employed. They already <laughs> got their man working here already. And you, you, and you like to give me jokes, you man. You like to give me pure jokes. I, I just, I just, the, it's P I E T R I C K B O Y E R, Petrick Voyer. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, but he is now the number two man in the hierarchy at the airport. He's the man that will take over when they get rid of Had the Born when he's no longer useful. He's the CEO. But that is what these people are doing. They're doing things behind the scenes, coming up with all this, and then presenting it to you. I know with this thing, if my members at the airport didn't decide that they were going to take industrial action, we were not found out. But this PPP signing up and this PPP was an afterthought. It was already consummated. And why would you have your man working here and you haven't gotten a contract yet? Mm -hmm. I think, I think no, Marcy. But Marcy. when you restrict trust in these government, keep on trusting them. No, I think the, this this whole discussion and, and I mean, what, what Caswell just introduced also speaks to employee rights benefits and all of these things as well because at the end of the day his 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 union members will need to know what is what is their situation um but it, it bothers me that there's so much that is happening that the public is sitting and looking on and watching and trying to figure out exactly what is going on i mean and and you know we we talk about transparency and good governance we hear it all the time but at the end of the day so many decisions are are taking place i mean i i if i go back to this and i i need to reiterate it that having if we didn't have this discussion today if i if if we you know didn't talk about this i would not even have realized from listening to the debate in the parliament 
uh, um, the extracts carried in the news, the discussion on brass sacks today, that the bulk of the, the national insurance bill has to do with the reorganizing, with, with management issues, about the legal structure of the organization and all of these mm -hmm. things. As I said, I mean, I went back because when I when I downloaded the 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 um the ministerial statement um to make sure that I had to go back and check to make sure that I had all the pages is a nine page document and there is nothing of substance in there talking about that and what are the implications for <clears throat> for the workers because in this as well in the legislation there's reference to the setting up of a private pension for employees in national insurance i don't know if you you spotted that casual in the in yes the, they are the within two years of reorganizing or whatever reorganizing, they will have to set up their own pension scheme the people who go over from the public service will remain under cap 25 which is the public pension that for public servants unfortunately i don't trust this government enough i don't trust them as far as i control the prime minister and what they have done every time is to put that clause in there, but don't obey it. Don't, don't follow it. Bra, just only recently, after how many years? have to pay these people the pension for, on the salary that they were making when they retired from Bra, and not the salary they paid the public mm -hmm. service all those years ago, you know. They, they, they um, trick people. You know, I, I don't understand but why they would do it. You know, I, th this is a country that they run. Th th this is not their place. They're doing it on our behalf. Because they're definitely on our behalf, do it well and treat us well. No? They always feel that they have to deceive us. So I don't trust them when they put that, those few clauses in there because every at the airport when they had the transition, they said nothing will change to the staff. It changed. Mm. Something, as simple as, something as simple as the Sick, the um, sick leave. You were getting 14 days sick leave if you were temporary or 21 of your permanent. They bring all down to six. And they said, though, the terms and conditions will remain the same. But mm -hmm. when the actual transition happened and people went over, you got sick days, though. And when you missed three days, they were right here telling about you, you soon run up your sick days and all kind of madness. So I don't mm -hmm. trust them. The, what should happen? And I told the minister this year, today on brass tacks. The problem is that the government is going about fixing things that they don't understand. Like, for instance, I told him that there's an American saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The national insurance legislation was not broke, according to the Americans, yeah. but they're trying to fix it. And they don't understand what they are doing because everything that they have put in place is already in place. Yeah. Except, except hiring staff. The board cannot hire staff. Everything else the board can do. Right now, today, the board can do everything that you see in the new legislation. So there's no need for it. Mm. Wow. You know, um, <laughs> um, folks, this is this is very, very, very um a very important time. I believe this is, I want to believe this is a turning point. I'm going to I'm going to be very very um honest and and my husband can tell you that it is so this whenever you know this whole weekend we we're talking about it and I said Dave I'm not going to get involved. I'm not getting involved uh, getting involved I wasn't born here. <laughs> Mr. McLean I'm being honest. I said not me. I'm not getting involved. Let the Bajans rise up. Let the Bajans rise up. But the more I thought about it and this is what pushes me, what gets me going, guys, to all of you who are watching. You, do you know what, what gets me going? It's the fact that we live in a country without any formal opposition. And I always say to myself, if we all decide to, we're not going to get involved, what's going to happen to our beloved Barbados? What's going to happen to it? And that's was, why I would get involved. That, and that's because that's why the Arabs. computer and came on, huh? If you don't get them, if what will happen, they will sell it to the Arabs for ten million dollars a, a year. <laughs> you know, this is this is um and 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 I believe I don't know what can happen for Wednesday, but I am saying that um, we need to send a clear signal on Wednesday. Something has to be sent on Wednesday as some signaling 
uh, needs to be sent on Wednesday. There are 504 of us on here um, on tonight. Well, with Caswell and myself, and I see Winston is back in the green room. There are will be 508 persons logged on here tonight. And I, I believe when Wednesday comes, what is going to happen? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fet up the whole time and forget about it? What's going to happen by Wednesday? Are they going to pass tell you what I'd like to see. Huh? I can tell you what I would like to see. I would like to see when Wednesday morning breaks that no government office open. I will open the hospital, of course, because you need to have that open. And nothing at hospital and clinics and stuff, but nothing else. But business can do that. If you see that happen, that will happen when my bones are white. Listen, I um Caswell, I am telling you, I I I I do I, I you know I I Miss McLean, I, I don't you know they say only certain set of you know a certain type of um of, of um the enslaved people went to Jamaica, etc. But when you really begin to look at the history, there are maroons here, you know. There were maroons in Barbados too. The maroons all about that. That spirit is still here. The spirit of the maroons is still here. But you those know, maroons I, married those, those maroons married those same people. <laughs> <laughs> no man, no man, not my Bajan people. No, I no, don't but, believe that. I believe with information, something's gonna happen. It can't stay like this, Miss McLean. Well, my my position on this, Marcia, is that we. I certainly am using this forum to ask the minister of finance the prime minister same person and her cabinet and parliamentary group to stop and explain properly to barbados what is happening we can we can decide as well citizens can decide i i i sit in from where i sit as a member of a political party and form administration i would prefer not to suggest anything caswell is a trade unionist and i think he's gone down a uh, a trade unionist role, but let me explain what I think is critical because as far as I'm concerned, and I will put on my, my teacher's hat, that's where I spent the largest time of my working life as a, as a lecturer at university, a teacher, teaching people management. And this is a case of mismanagement of very critical, uh, two very critical issues that are related. Um, there, there's this notion that at the end of the day, we spoke the Barbadians, we went across the country. My question is doing what exactly? Because at the end of the day, if you are consulting with me prior to drafting a piece of legislation, come back to me and say, this is what we are proposing for these reasons. Let us walk you through how it's gonna impact you. Because at the end of the day, let's, let's the, the legislation that, um, affects public offices. Remember, I made the point that as a as a category of workers in Barbados, the public sector is the single largest group. My question is, how is this going to impact? And don't, 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 you know, let, let me put it positively, because as you know, that's how I like to speak. Demonstrate it by giving people some practical information on how this is going to work. Um, because at the end of the day, people need to know what are the implications. You know, we've talked about, we've, we, you know, there's so much packed into these two pieces of legislation that a, that a debate on Friday, I, I think I was on the road at five o'clock. That's when CBC brings over the five o'clock news on evenings, VLB is 5.30. And if I remember correctly, that debate would have been finished by then. Two bills, you understand, of critical import. And that is, that is what it is. So people need to understand, as I said, you're talking about, um, and, and let's part the national insurance and look at the, at the pension reform. What exactly is the situation for public workers? They, they, the government introduced contracts some time ago. And when I asked questions, public officers could not help me to understand because the kind of question I was asking is if, if uh, and this is at the, let's say at the senior level, and the same thing would apply probably to, for, for when you're working out pensions and whatever else. If I am a deputy permanent secretary, and I take a contract to work, and Kazu, perhaps you can help me understand this. And I take a contract to, to for three years, um, as a as a permanent secretary. And for whatever reason, and I presume in part of that contract, you have, um, you have a clause which says that they can they can terminate the contract, or you can you can terminate it. 
if that is the case, do I go back to my substantive post? What happens to my salary? What happens to my contributions to pension? You see, the point I'm making is that like those kind of arrangements, this legislation has some serious implications for different categories of workers. And therefore, rather than rush through a bill to come back and do what has been the standard practice in the last few years to, to, to make decisions, put them in place and then say, hey, it ain't working. We got to pull back and, and we'll come again. Stop and talk to people. Talk them through this so that they understand. Talk the ministers and MPs through it so that they understand. Mm -hmm. Because I am not hearing in most of the debates that they understand the issues. Mm -hmm. So if they can talk us through those issues, then, you know. But, but to pass this and, and to have so many questions, and I am sure that once it is passed and they try to put it in place, there will be some issues. So, so you know. Yeah. You know, I, I, go back. You went and you asked back. questions. Go back and help answer some questions. Answer, yeah. provide some answers. I think yeah, people yeah. need, need, they need a lot of, um, you know, and people that have a lot of questions. I see um, Winston wants to um, to say something. Go ahead, um, Mr. Clark. Yeah. Um, I am going to be the most forward as far as uh, this discussion is concerned because um miss mcqueen you understand how she as a former politician the diplomacy she would use right as far as this um what we the public think should happen all right but i'm going to be straightforward right um you don't need to ask questions we don't need to, to for them to explain because they're going to go about and do it anyway and they're going to do something that is going to be adverse to us okay adverse to our children and adverse to our grandchildren all right they have implemented something which which is disadvantageous to us but when you look at their employment standard it is a total it's a total paradox to what they have implemented for us all right so unless we as caswell said and i've been saying this for a long time do not work for one day and show that we can grind everything to a halt. And if they continue with it until we get what we require, because nobody across the board wants the age of pensions to go to that age. Nobody mm -hmm. wants the things that they're implementing. Nobody wants to go about hearing the talk of transparency, yet not actually getting the transparency. They did the pass the bill when Caswell was not in Senate him and about two or three other senators. They they ease and they that no, they're doing the same thing and using the festivities as a kind of a, 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 a I don't know, as a as a diversion, so to speak, so they can implement what they're doing. And they as we do not do something about it, they will consistently do it. I do not know what else is wrong with Barbadians, no. But it looks as if a spell is being worked on the island. You understand? And we need to get up. And I'm going to ask, I've done it before, I'm going to ask people and be pick a day to come out and stand up and say, listen, come to us or we will not be accepting this. We will mm -hmm. not accept it. Come to us. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm, we don't, we don't, I don't, I'm not propagating any violence. You understand? Or any civil unrest or any of that sort. But the same way that we can we could have gone come out and uh, and make sure that the vaccines are not mandatory, we can come out and do this. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can do this. We've done it before and we can do it again. Do it All again. Right? I, I agree with Thank you. I agree with you. And uh, you know, this is a call to action. As you said, we don't understand Miss McLean can't be a part of this. Um, you know, but 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 I just want to say that um, we have. Listen, let's let let's let's start to move forward. That's just how I how I think. So, what would we need? Right. You're the trade unionist, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Franklin. I'm I'm not into anywhere. I I left my Sunday Sunday lay down a rest day. Um, you know, and and and, and here t I don't want to be talking. This is not a talk shop. We want to plan. How do we plan this this sick out and this one day? Alicia says sick out for real. We start with one day. What can can we actually do something on Wednesday? Because they plan to pass it Wednesday. You know, that's the thing about it. 
What can we do? You see, the thing is, if you call in sick on Wednesday, you can't do anything because you're allowed to call in sick for two days. So, so you're saying if, right. if you call in sick on on Wednesday, they can they can't do anything. You're speaking to government workers. I'm speaking to government workers. I'm speaking to any worker in Barbados. Any worker, worker in Barbados. Because the, 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 the um public service act allows you to call in two days, and the employment rights act allows you to call in two days as well. All right, so we look at a certificate. So that's the easiest thing to do. Will they do it? I have my doubts. Let's we're we, we do... we going to stay positive. Let us stay okay. positive. I, I, we I, I, are I am calling. I'm positive they won't do it. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's I'm, start. I'm... Folks, 524 of us here. Can we, how many of you will say on here that you will call in sick on Wednesday because of this, I'm... this issue? I'm going to push it's enough to make it really sick, you know. I'll tell you something though, because Maxine asked about the contract. But only Saturday, yesterday, I see people on Saturdays, you know, I'm poor, so I gotta see people and those that I'm not forcing enough like and have weekends off. And a principal came to my office, and that's the question she asked me. The problem here is that. Government putting contracts in place for public officers, but they're not explaining to the public officers what are the repercussions. Because let's say you are a senior teacher. Let's go to find a senior teacher. And there's a vacancy for principal. You apply, you do the fancy talking and stuff, and you get the job because you did a really good interview, because you can talk pretty. Then you didn't work out. You get a contract for three years. At the end of the three years, the people say, well, I'm not renewing this contract. What will you do now? Go back now and become junior to the deputy, the, the um, mm. heads of departments, and principal know that you were once. It was going to be embarrassing. This public service is supposed to be a permanent service. The politicians are supposed to be temporary. They get five-year increments. You get a five-year increment. And one thing this, this government is doing is trying to make sure that they get their way and everything. Because if you have a public servant who is on contract, he gets the contract in year one of the government service. He gets it for three years. Mm -hmm. He is now supposed to advise the government on technical issues. But the government wants something done. But he is saying no in his heart. But when his contract due you now another couple of weeks, you think he can tell them no? Now, if he were permanent, he can say, no, that's wrong. And, and these are my reasons. You can't do that when you, when you, the same people can tell you, well, I'm not going to renew your contract every time you know. So mm. it is not good to have senior public officers on contract because they cannot give the best adv advice to, to the politicians. Because most politicians don't want good advice and they just want their way. But not all politicians, but I mean this this group. Right? <laughs> Listen, pension, uh, age, pension age at 60, 68. My grandmother got her pension at age 68. She was born in 1900. I remember with $13 or something like that. Thomas has lowered that to 60 to 65. This group not gonna get back. You realize? That's what happened, you know. It used to be 68 before, and people thought that was too high. It's still too high. I'm not going back there. When I've got the 67, I know they complete the, the, the circles, but I can't go all the way right back to 68. Mm -hmm. And wow. I saved this one for the last because I wanted to, to, to get you a bit angry. Yes, I'm, I'm going to admit I want to make you angry. If you are working as a public officer and you join the service after the 1st of September 1975 and you are getting a pension from the Treasury, when you reach national insurance pension age, you your pension from the treasury is reduced by the amount of money you get from national insurance. Except you're an MP. Can you read that? Read that again. Read that one more time, Mr. Franklin. I, I wasn't reading, but I'll tell you again. Persons who join the civil service or public service, they call it now, 
mm -hmm. after the 1st of September 1975, when they are qualified for pension from the Treasury, and they have a pension from the Treasury. Are you getting your pension from the Treasury? When you then qualify for the national insurance pension, the pension that you're getting from the Treasury is reduced by the amount of money you get from national insurance, except you're a politician. They still get both. They still get both. So they're thinking about everybody back about themselves. They're getting two, you know. They're getting two. And they're taking away your one. Mm. And, and, and take, not only taking away, but get, giving a longer to get it. They get at 50. You know, <laughs> I, people always tell me, Caswell, you should be an MP, you should be a politician. I don't want to be a crook. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, as a former politician, I was never a crook. Uh, just I know that, that much, but I'm not saying that you are, but the people who invited me. Oh, do I not see anything of what I could do? I could be. I, you know, I, 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 th I think something like this. I, I think Barbados, Barbados, we, and it's I'm saying we, there not, needs to be some action. There needs to be some action. And um, I believe that within, you know, it's a short time. We don't have, you know, to, to do anything on the streets. You're going to need to get permits. And we don't, we're in a holiday home. period. So just it's stay home. home. Just, just, just stay, stay home. home. Listen, I, we will come back on. We will come back on. Miss McLean probably not going to come back on with this band. Because this, but we, we got, we got. We when you're finished, I will, I will say something. But you. Listen. We need to we need to get back on here um tomorrow night. We need to keep this going. Emmanuel is on. Listen, all the bloggers, everybody, because we, we need to keep this holiday tomorrow hot. All bloggers get on and call for the day on Wednesday. Every blogger, because we they're not gonna do it on the radio, they're not gonna do it on the television. It's only the internet we have. You did you see the show? Take it and send it all about. Guys, there has to be a call to action. If not, we're only on here talking, right? You um you were gonna say something else, um, uh, Mr. Franklin, and then um uh, Emmanuel. No, I was, going, I was just gonna say hi Emmanuel, how are you doing? Good to see you. I, I wanted to say something though, Marcia, because Hi, unless Emmanuel was up. talking, let me let me pause and let Emmanuel. Yeah, let 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 Emmanuel since he came on, and I'm I'm gonna put the link again for anybody to come on. Anybody, this is a good time. You don't have to turn on your camera. Let your voice be heard. Go ahead, um, Emmanuel. Hi. Good night. Can you hear me? I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, we hear yes, you. Yes, yes, we okay. can hear usually, you. Usually, usually I have guests on my platform, never really a guest on somebody else's. This is interesting. Good night to each and everyone. You too, Mr. Franklin, Miss Ford, and obviously Marcia Queen. Greetings to you. Uh, this has been an interesting conversation. I was listening to it for quite some time, and 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 I think we are on the right track in part. And I say in part only because if you think about it, you know, when, when did national insurance, when did this really start, Mr. Franklin? Was it in 1966? As when it started, this it, well, the bill was passed in 66. It started mm -hmm. in actually 1967. 67. But it was officially... Even uh, today, mm -hmm. the, the Warden Adams said it, um, I didn't wrote it down. He said that it, it was um, managed effectively or something to that effect. And I said, well, if it was being managed, so go, why you want to fix it? Why you want to change it? He didn't mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. Because he, he was saying that it was it was good, you know. He, he, he said um creditable performance. I wrote it down. He credible said, performance. Credible performance over here. And yet still, they won't fix something that was working creditably. They won't change it. I asked, but why? It didn't broke. Well, if I may, the reason I asked that question is because I, I think in order to fully grasp what is really going on is to look at it and review. There's an old African saying, if you want to know what's going on in the road up ahead, you answer someone returning. But let's look back a little bit. In 1966, what was one of the most significant things that happened in Barbados outside of national insurance? It was independence. independence. Exactly. So, well, what exactly was independence? You see, if we never fully grasp what happened in Barbados in 1966, we can never really appreciate what the national insurance scheme, sorry, scam, well, whatever it is, <laughs> you can never really appreciate what it truly represents. 
And think about it, for example, people who would have bought into this idea in 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, who would have then qualified automatically because of the age they were at and received the pension from those who are now paying into it, recognize that that wouldn't have last but so long unless we continue to pay into it. Now, the, 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 the age limit of people expectancy, life expectancy in Barbados has changed significantly from the days of the plantocracy, which was about 20, 25, 30 years old, if you're lucky. So now they're asking us to be 60, 65, well, in some cases, 68. And you juxtapose that with the Bible who say you're supposed to live until 70. Understand what they're really saying in a different language is that we want to work you to death. The only other circumstances where you work to death was on the plantation. So if we want to do a juxtapose, let's look at it this way, Mr. Franklin and Ms. Ford. And Marcy, I'm sure you can understand this. Ms. McLean. Ms. Sorry, Ms. McLean of Ford. Where did that come from? Ms. McLean, the reality is that Barbados is still functioning as a plantocracy. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not is irrelevant. And the only way out of it, you have to ask yourself one of two questions. Am I looking for comfortability on the plantation or am I looking for liberation from the plantation? Because if you don't know which one you're looking for, the idea of staying home, marching, protesting, doing anything, it's going to vary. Because some folks just really want to be comfortable. They don't really want to upset. You know, I, I don't really want to get into the whole talk about this and that because I got my mortgage. I got my children overseas. I can't afford to upset nobody. And there's others who, you know, might think, you know what? I don't care about nothing. I ain't paying nothing. I ain't paying nothing. But according to the Bible, we should come out of her, my people. And I've said this on many platforms. The reason why there's only this seemingly one option is that because we won't create our own governing body. Rather than keep begging the plantocracy to make us comfortable with our enslavement, why don't we simply come out and create our own governing body, start to support our own, put things in place, to take care of our elderly at the age of retirement, at a respectable age, put things in place to take care of our children in the schools and learning environments that doesn't cause them to give up their morality put things in place to create our own trade our own currency we have to go that route if we have to and let's sustain ourselves there's plenty of land in barbados what they call in crown land that we know belong to the people we don't have to get into the conversation about who own what and what and asking me and motley and her administration to comply with what you're asking simply lead them to their own device and simply create our own. And we keep coming back to the same place of asking the plantocracy to make us comfortable with our enslavement. They will never make you but so comfortable. In fact, a citizen yield, a people, anyone, any governing body that desires to keep you from thriving and doing better is looking to enslave you. The reason why they even put this this weekend in light of the four day, the two day holiday and whatnot. It's almost like an insult to the intelligence of Barbadians. And the prime servant said, you know, we are ready to come and walk up. So come and walk up. So mm -hmm. what they're telling you is that, in fact, there's a play called um, Caliban. I don't know if you ever heard it by Shakespeare. It's called Caliban. Most Barbadians probably never heard of it. I don't know. Maybe not. But what was said to Caliban is that the only thing you need to do with Caliban is give him some booze, I guess, and a woman. And he ain't going to remember nothing, man. And I, I yield with that. You know, we got to be mindful of the times we're in and recognize what they're really looking to do is re-enslave Barbadians in a whole different way. And unless we are honest about this and work towards liberating ourselves and leave Egypt, we're going to be stuck in Egypt with the Pharaoh working and we'll have no say. And yes, I think both of you said it, and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly Marcy said it, they are going to work you to death. You will not collect no, insur no insurance. It will not be passed on to your family. And trust when I tell you, you are going to die not receiving nothing. And, and I yield with that, Marcia, for the time. Yeah. Um, just, um, um, I put you in the green room, but hang around, hang around, Emmanuel, if you can. Um, Jen Wiggs is saying that all the public workers in the unions need to address their union leaders and let them know to go and let this administration know that they're shutting down the country if all the bill, if uh, if they pass the bills. Um, Mr. You are the trade unionist here. I'm going to defer to you, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Franklin. Um, I, I, um, the NUPW, BWU, I don't know of the other names. We have your, you, you have your union. Is this a good suggestion that the, the workers who are listening need to go to contact their 
their um, their unions and and let them know um, what their concerns are and what they would want to do, uh, Mr. Franklin. Well, that ideally that is the that should that's what should happen. Okay, but let me explain to you what's been happening with the unions. I remember they had something called the NSRL, which was the, the most uh, as fair tax, the fairest tax that we had in place. But the merchants didn't like it because they had to pay that money up front. With VAT, they like VAT because they can always steal the VAT. But with the NSRL, they had, it was the most equitable tax. They had to pay it up front. And there was no refunding of it. So they can go and claim it back. So they didn't like it. And those people, merchants, usually the people of Caucasians who are the merchant class, but together with the Barbados Labour Party, demonize Friendless Church and Sinclair over that tax and get the unions on board. Mind you, when they call me, I tell them, let me tell them something. Anybody from my union who, who, who joined that march would be on would be would be working, would be walking off their job because my union will not support it. I didn't go. And you should see the thing is, and I, I, I have seen then this government. Came in the promise, oh, we're gonna get rid of the and that's how did it. And and then take the taxes off of the merchants and put it on water. Poor of the poor tax having to pay that tax. You're paying $45 for the poor people who pay who is the $32 water bill, and you put $45 on it. That is what this government did. And the people say, well, I can vote for them, so yeah, they can take it. it. So the but the unions supported the government. All right. the governments the union is supported just recently here at the airport the airport staff i think 50 of them resigned from nupw and get back over nupw's behavior my job got 45 of them as a result but thank god for small mercies they resigned and left nupw simply because the government told nupw only asked for three percent over the first year three very second year the chairman, I understand, but I wasn't there. The staff told me, the chairman said, well, that's a proposal. You fellas can come with something else, and we will see what else we can do. The union said, no, we ain't doing it. The chairman tell you, go and do it. The chairman of the airport said, you want to do X. And the, and the union said, no, we are not doing it. We can stick with the mm -hmm. government, tell me to stick to it. So mm -hmm. that is, that's the problem that you have. The unions have been bought. And, and I'll tell you something. Mayor Molly is not a fool. She knows how to win friends and influence people. And she went the boat and she influenced the unions. And she has all of her people in place and vital areas. The general secretary, presidents, and all kinds of people of these unions swear their allegiance to her. So they're not going to call anybody. Mm. Marcy, wow. I, I wanna I wanna um ask some questions because you know I like to think things through from beginning to end because you're, you're 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 clearly saying we have some issues as barbarians and and so on with the legislation and all that is proposed Sick out on wednesday and then do what what exactly are you asking of government and i think these are the things we have to work out because going and standing in the heat and dehydrating yourself on wednesday if you went as one of the options does not necessarily lead to that. What we're saying to the government, what I'm saying certainly um, as somebody who, I tell people I am one of a four generation family. So I, I am only thinking about me and my son, but of my, my oldest brother's grandchildren and great grandchildren. Because if, you know, the point I'm making is, even if we start from the, from the basis that there may be the need for some kind of pension reform, what is informing that? Because I, I heard, if I didn't hear all he said, but I think I heard the Minister of Labor talking about <clears throat> an agreement with the IMF. What did they agree with the IMF to do? And what is that going to, to do in relation to us as Barbados? What impact will it have on us, negative and otherwise? So my thinking is that they need to come to the public and say, we. this is what I think they need to do, stick a pin in passing this legislation, because in passing it, they're still going to have a whole set of issues. You say that your plan was to consult widely, or you did that, consult, consult widely to what end? Come back and say to people, 
these are the issues and let them see how it is going to impact them. I, Caswell and I had a conversation about public officers and, and, and the payment of contributions and so on. Look at that and show people what's happening. When I pay this contribution, what am I getting out of it at the end of the day? Um, you know, this person is saying, Peter, is saying that you're unhappy. And you can stick out and be unhappy, but after that, and you stick out and they're standing in Parliament, they pass the bill anyway, you know. So I, I am, I, Mr. Earl can tell me some more, as to, but I believe that we should be asking some very specific things of government in terms of what we need for them to say and do to demonstrate that they are serious about serving the interests of Barbados. I but, can but go I, Yeah, if I can say something there, Ms. McLean, mm. I think that um, because a lot of people, you know, they say to us when we go out on the street, why are you going out there in the hot sun and it's not going to do anything? I mean, one of the things that happened, you saw the pressure us going out there with the, the children, all of us that went out, um, you even you heard the prime minister now saying, oh, we're not going to do that. Not necessarily that we believe her, but the point is that it adds pressure. And I think that that's one of the things that can be done. But in addition to, to if you want to do the sick out, then it's also to to come up with another um, measure that will but, then but be able Mars to say, here. this is why we're doing what we're doing. But, but in the second, and, and let's go back to the to the, the issue of the children. While you were going out there, you were also articulating what the issues were, what mm -hmm. the challenges were. So so I'm saying, okay, we, we, we go and we stick out on, on Wednesday. But if, as, as Caswell said, if you're a public servant, you can call in sick for two days. Um, mm -hmm. So they may just treat it as, okay, they, they, they had a, you know, they, there's right. a, a, a hangover from whatever the, in the private sector. If you stick out on, if you stay, if you're absent after by holiday, they dock your pay. The point I'm making is that you have to be, as you seek to do that, there's some other critical things that you need to be putting on the table. What it's else? So a, what do you suggest? What else? Do we need to stick out and gosh, then what, what hold I, a press conference? Do we, we hold what? a press conference Tuesday and say that we are doing that? Or you hold a press conference on the Wednesday? What I'm saying is, let us, we, we, you know, let's take this idea and see how can we build on it. I'm going to bring, um, look, oh, oh, Steve Moore. Before you answer that, Miss McLean, Steve Moore is waiting to speak. Steve, um, take a good good night. Good to see you. I know you're a bridge and living in the U.S. Take a couple minutes and share because we want to get into some practical stuff now. You, Go ahead, um, Steve. UK, well, Marcia. UK, Marcia. Now, UK. first of all, yeah. first of all, right, with what they want to do. Yes, it's good to get out there and march or uh, protest whatever in the hot sun and get dehydrated because I'm very controversial. The first thing that they want you to do is to get up Monday and go out there in the hot sun and get dehydrated, whining your behind, doing nothing while they pass their bill. All right? That is not nice. We've got a, a, a government here that is run by family. Because it looked like a family affair to me. And all of them are loyal to one person. They're not loyal to the Belgium or the Barbados public. They're not loyal to the, to, to the poor people of the country. Something needs to be done right away, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I've always been saying people need to down tools because it ain't getting any better. Second of, second of all, this airport deal, who negotiated this airport deal because from what i know here the indians do a tight shift the chinese do a tight shift they walk into africa and africans just back down and they get what they want i'm suspecting that this is the same thing with the airport look i'm so frustrated with what i see in barbados from here in the uk i i i, I don't know what to think it's just i'm just pulling me here out thank you very much marcia i'm just pulling me yeah. here out yeah, th thank you, Steve. I know you were there in the UK and, and very concerned um, about Barbados. Um, but as we think about um, how, uh, think about guys, um, you know, what can we add to the sick out, to the one day, not going in for the Wednesday? What can be added to it? And to take what Miss McLean is saying um, to heart and to let's build on it, guys. And that's what I know Barbadians for. Let me tell you, Jamaicans will go now and just jump off. 
and uh, we don't we're not thinking about anything you guys are very very calculative you're thinking it through but you're gonna get it done that's my belief about barbados barbadians um um let me hear from miss lynette eastman is here um lynette um let me make sure your mic is open hi hi miss eastman um thank you for joining what's thank you. yes okay, thank you and thank you for putting this session on um i personally when i first heard about the and this was some time ago i can't remember when when it was first announced the plans that the government had for the national insurance um, scheme, especially in terms of its um, the way, in terms of its structure. And I remember clearly one of the things that was said was that the NAS was now going to be used to invest in quite not not just public um, sector projects, but private projects. Um, in Barbados, which, which sounded to me um, like a type of investment that normally you would not have for schemes like a national insurance scheme. I heard that very clearly. Um, so, so it looked as though anybody in the private sector would be able to have access to these funds. I was very, very concerned about that, but, but very few people seem to have noticed that that was what was said, but it was said very clearly. Um, in terms of the way that things are now being done in the legislature, many of us criticize what we call the Westminster system. But this system that we have is not the Westminster system. Mm. The, reason that you, the reason that you publish um, legislation in the Gazette is so you and you publish it in the Gazette. I mean, and this is the old traditional way. It was published in the Gazette, and the Gazette was cheap. And the reason that that was so was so that ordinary people could have access to the legislation, whether they read it or not, or whether a school teacher they might have a school teacher somewhere who would go and get it and would always have the Gazette. It meant that people would have access to it. So what has started of late is that when you have legislation, it's not circulated for any period of time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, Caswell talks about the people in the Senate and the parliament and whatever, but traditionally it was so that everybody could have access to it. And it would also mean that you would have time to call your constituency representative and say, look, I hear that they're saying they're going to pass this piece of legislation. I fully understand what it is, but you come and talk to us and tell us really what it means so that we can understand if we support it. Because I don't know how in a democracy like ours, where you vote for a representative, how you could pass anything in parliament without discussing it with your constituents. You're supposed to discuss it with them first, and then you're supposed to go out and represent them in the parliament and decide if you're going to vote on it or not. So the so anybody who is going into parliament who feels that they could just pick up a piece of legislation, talk, and vote for it, they're not they're not pursuing their mandate, their duty as a constituency representative because they should have had a discussion with their constituents first. And you know, I say this quite often, but people seem to feel it's a joke, but that's how democracies are supposed to work. They're not representing themselves. They're supposed to be representing us who voted for them or who did not vote for them. They're supposed to come and tell us what the bill is about before they're going there and speak. When they're going there and they read it and they speak, on whose behalf are they speaking? It can't be ours because they didn't discuss it with us. And this has, this has been going on for some time. It needs to stop and people need to insist that it stops. Now, the other point that I would like to make is about demonstrating, marching, and doing whatever else. Yes, you can, um, you, you can also, for example, make recommendations to the, um, to the parliament, to your constituency representative, write letters, say how these changes are going to affect people negatively, see what amendments, we can propose 
all those things you can do. But I would like to say that within the history of the Caribbean, people demonstrating is what politicians fear most. Yes. They fear it so much that in the 60s and 70s, they passed public order legislation to stop people from demonstrating. They passed, who didn't have, they passed new legislation. So Barbados got a new piece of legislation in order to stop people from demonstrating. Trinidad had the Sedition Act for the longest time, but during the 60s and 70s, they ramped it up. And this was across the region. I came across probably only two countries in the region that did not double down on demonstrations during the 60s and 70s. And this is why we must know our history because these things, these uprisings that you have had in the regions, like we talk about the 1930s riots, and we believe that they only have riots in Barbados. They were across the region. Correct. In the 60s okay. and 70s, this was also across the region. I mean, the worst probably was in Trinidad, but I will tell you that when people get up and march, their response is, unfortunately, put legislation in place to quell it, make it more expensive for people to do it, and they have also imprisoned people. And in some cases, they have killed people for demonstrating the political elite within the Caribbean. So th this, is, this is not a joke. And this isn't anything that is partisan political at all. It has to do with a group of people who believe that there are political elites in the region. They still exist. And they believe that their mandate is not for the development of the region because with all the assets that the region has, and our greatest assets is wonderful weather, um, you know, 365 days of the year, there are not many countries in the world that have that, that asset. And then we have talent and each country has something that it is known for, but, but still, we are ranked low on the Human Development Index and continue to fall every year. Why? Because I do not feel that amongst the political elite that they have any intention to develop these, the countries of the region any further. And you yes. see, I, I, I rebel when I hear this talk about Barbadians being mm -hmm. passive. Mm -hmm. other people not being passive. The problem, the problem in the region is the same. And this talk about the differences between Barbadians and Trinidadians and Jamaicans and Guyanese and Vincentians, it is part of the strategy to keep us apart. Because if we were actually to work together in the region for the development of the region, the political elite could not stop us but they're so confident that we are going to remain divided, that, that Beijing's thing are like Trinidadians and Jamaicans thing are like Vincentians and all that kind of nonsense. I think we have to stop that. Yes, we may, may be different in some ways, but it is superficial. All of the uprisings that you have had in the 30s, the 60s, whatever it is, it was across the region and there were Barbadians involved just like anywhere else. So, that is a fallacy. We may, we may do things differently, but when you look at the end result as to where we are in the region, we're all the same place, still with a, with, with, with a class of people that don't look as though they will ever be able to extract themselves from poverty. There, there are areas in Barbados that you go, that, you know, you, you go down St. James, and you, you look at the facilities down St. James, even when people have supermarkets, the ones down the West Coast are better than the ones that they have up on the South Coast. It's a fact because they're not doing it for Barbadians, they're doing it for the people that visit. And that, that's, that's just a fact. And then you have people in Barbados who don't have any flooring boards. You might drive along and say, oh, that's a pretty child house. But when you open the door, there are no flooring boards. And you know, they think that, hurts me 
the politicians in Barbados know this. Because they're the ones that push open everybody door and they see what, what, what conditions people are living in. And they still don't do anything about it when I think that they can do better. So that's my, that's my final point. My final point is that getting out there and marching makes a difference. Politicians sit up and listen and they take action. Now, because one of the things that came to me, I mean, I were dealing with the CARICOM single market and economy for quite a while. I did all the, I traveled along, around the region and talked to different people, et cetera. And it only dawned on me recently that you had these uprisings in the, 90, in the 60s and the 70s. And what did the political elite came up with? They signed the Treaty of Chagaramas to tell the people, we looking after you, all is well. And the people settled down and they have not sat up again since the 1970s mm -hmm. to say anything to the political elite in the region that this cannot continue. I worked on the CARICOM circuit, you know. So, you know, you in Barbados, you see that there are certain people who get jobs. Um, you see there are certain people who people say, my, you can't let he starve, you gotta, give, he sent, you gotta give work to do. No matter which party is in power. Well, I saw it on the CARICOM circuit where it was said, that old man, um, she's his daughter, you know, so she gotta get work, give she a consultancy. So it happens across the region. Well, there are individuals that we, we, we pay our taxes to educate them. And then when they come back in this space, because of this preferential treatment of certain people, they don't have the ability to share their knowledge and their skills with us, with, 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 with all of us. Because I, I am one of the people who I'm looking for somebody to rise up in the region and do something great. Um, because I know that I will benefit, take it as take it being as being selfish. I know that I will benefit, but but we continue to oppress and suppress the people with ability because my view is that there's a political elite in the region. They all know each other, they meet with each other. And I don't think that they're interested in the development of the region only to the extent that it continues to be a nice place to live. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's well, well yeah, that, that's, uh, I mean, we, that, that was a lot of history there and um, putting things in context. And I think that that was so important. That was like a nice plate of food. <laughs> uh, that was really, really good. Very good. Um, thank you so much for your, your input. Um, and so you you are adding to this this call to action and, and saying that um, well the sick out is fine but uh, but one of the things that they fear most well what they fear most is the people on the street and I saw that with the vaccine when they had the stuff with the injection I can't say that too much on my thing um, and when they and when and also you know with us going out if you notice all the things that have been coming out against um, the people who've been going out to, about the children because they fear that they actually came out and said to us we got we got messages to tell us don't march we got those you know and so they're afraid of that they're afraid of the public display it's going to be embarrassing they don't want the people the international people to see any unrest in barbados come on guys so in addition you, you we've got to get out there we, we will have to get out we were not gonna have to hit the pavement we gotta go out there it's important to register it. it's important to do what miss mclean is saying um, Ms. McLean is saying, make it very clear uh, as to exactly why we are, if you're going to sick out, why you're sicking out, if you're going to go out, if you're going to um, go out and demonstrate why you're going out, be very, very clear. And that can be done with, with press releases, press conference, organizers, it's Barbados, intelligent people, you know, you do things very orderly. You know, you don't like sitting on page and going to be breaking windows and, 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 you know, and doing all kind of writing. Although, let me tell you something, they need to be careful because there is a subculture that is happening here. And if you keep pressing that button, you keep pushing the people 
I'm sorry. You, you need, they need to be careful, be very careful of that. It's not the same Barbados that I came to 20 years ago. It's a different set of people, you know? So we, we have to be, be, um, be, be somebody here saying we need an academic approach. Yes, we need an academic approach. We need, uh, uh, we need to be able to, to, um, you know, to get all these ideas, but we got to do something, you know, cause we can't just keep talking about it. Um, Emmanuel, you're still here. I think I don't see, um, um, you've been hearing, um, and, and then I'm going to, going to go to, um, to, um, uh, Mr. Franklin and, and, um, Ms. McLean to close off the evening. Go ahead. Um, I, um, I, I just, I just want to make one small point on the historical front. And this is one because I happen to be doing some research, but during the sixties, when we had some um, uprisings in Barbados in that there were meetings and people were talking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the things that they did, there was, a, there was a, a, a magazine or newspaper that was published. I don't remember the name of it now, but of course it was considered to be subversive. And the government of the day carried up the price that you had to pay in order to publish a newspaper. And this was just a little newspaper that these people were putting out. So it does not surprise me that you have to pay more money for Zoom now. It's yes. the same thing. It's the yes. same thing. It is the same it's the, thing, in it? It's the, and the what, same thing happening I, over and over again. Over and over. Can I tell you something? The first um, time that we were going out for our marches, those of you who might not know, I might have just done. I'm Marcia Weeks, and I'm part of a group, uh, Watch Out My Children, and we um, conduct um, several protests. We've conducted several protests and so on in Barbados. And I remember we were going out, and um, I went to the police, and I, I love them. They've become my friend. But um, there, there's, there's some people there trying to dissuade me. And so they, they basically more than doubled the price on me for that permit. I don't know if you all remember when I took to Facebook, and begged the people. I, I have no shame. I went on Facebook and I told the people how much it was. And the people, the people, Mr. Franklin, the people gave me four times as much to pay that money. And let me tell you something. Do you know that same police um, uh, service, they contacted me and said, listen, what? Well, guess what? They overcharged you. And they gave me back the money which we're able to use for another part. So I agree with you. I and mean, I could tell from the conversation that she thought I was going to say, when she started to tell me, you know, this high price, she thought and told me to bring it the next day at 12 o'clock. She thought I wasn't going to bother. She thought it wasn't going to happen. I just, listen, I, I went into character on her and I just acted like I had the money. And I said, yes, I'll be there. And went straight to Facebook and got that money. And I'm, this is why I'm saying that Barbadians, listen, they don't play with Bajan people. Don't play with Bajan people. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Right? And I agree with you. They try to do fine tactics to make sure that you don't go out there and march. Because that is what they are most afraid of. Um, go ahead, Emmanuel. Um, uh, you have, do you have anything to add to, to next steps? Next steps. Yes, thanks, Marcia, and good night to you, Miss Eastman. Uh, it's good to see you. I think you articulated it very uh, intellectually. Uh, what I will say is that most Barbadians listening and those that will hear about this in the days to come, the reality is that a lot of people find themselves in a lower bracket. There's only a certain percentage of people who may benefit from this change in some form or the other. So for the most part, you know, I think Mark and Mac said it best. In order to get action from the people, you have to first wake the people. A lot of people are ignorant to what is really going on. They hear the, they hear the voice notes, they see the videos, they hear different things, and they're really uncertain as to, okay, so what next? They said, we're going to stay home. And like you said, Caswell, and I, I, follow why, I follow why you would say that. I don't know if I agree with you on that, in that folks might have reservations and not stay home. But the reality is, in their hearts, they may want to. But the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the reality is Barbadians are not always informed in order to make informed decisions. So yes. while we have these platforms and we have these conversations, we should always use them not to intellectualize the madness of government because we all know 
from time memorial, the government, whether B or D, there's no difference. They all really the same. They've done the same thing and played political ping pong with the people's emotions for as long as we can remember. The point I want to bring home is that in order to get the kind of action that we are discussing in order to bring effect, we have to first understand what is it that we're really asking for? Because we've asked for things ranging from mandates for certain jobs. We've asked for things from different instruments that were infringed on our schools and our children. We've asked for different things from the, uh, the dress code, the different children protection. We've asked for a lot of things. And at this point, we're still asking and we are asking and asking and asking and asking at what time, at what point do we become emotionally and spiritually frustrated enough to recognize we got to stop asking the government to do for us what we ought to be doing for ourselves. They're the administration. We need to first stop calling them government. They're not the government. They're the admins that we put in place to govern our affairs. So we need to start learning and educating ourselves. So I'm going to encourage Marcia and Brother Caswell and the others here to start having conversations with your circles, your groups on what governance and government really is all about. Empower the people. Give the people back the power so they'll know how to make informed decisions. They can't make informed decisions, Marcia. We're looking to have them make emotional decisions. Oh, they're going to work you to death. Yo, come out and let's march. Wait a minute. Some folks are not thinking along those lines, but if they can understand and have a clear realization, well, wait a minute, uh, this is wrong. There's something wrong with this. It's going to affect not only me, but the generations to come. Then we can have the action. In fact, Marcia, you won't even have to ask them to come out. You're going to find up, you're going to find right first and foremost that when they go to work, they start asking their boss, listen, you need to stop paying my money into national insurance. I want to take responsibility for my own pension insurance. I want to take my own policy with some other private entity. I don't want to go this route. The whole direction this thing is going is to be privatized. And we know it. Whether they outrightly say it or not, in time to come, if they disrupt it enough and get enough people to be disgruntled by what is happening, they're going to mm -hmm. pull out. So in order to get them to respond to the idea of staying home on Wednesday and perhaps Thursday and then going to work on Friday, to then go back to work next week. We know the government don't like protests. And and, and again, Miss uh, Eastman said it. They don't like it. But the reality is, unlike France or Europe or these American, different, well, America, we use that, where people have known freedom. So when you try to infringe on their freedoms, they act. Barbadians as a people, for the most part, have never known freedom. They're born in captivity. They're born into the, the idea of governing by people who look like you, which makes Barbados a neo colony. They won't have the same effect. They won't have the same effect and reaction. So we have to first educate people, let them understand what this is really all about, how it's going to affect them. And I agree, Ms. Eastman, these ministers are supposed to report into the people, but they not, and they have not for quite some time. So in an effort to make them aware, and I'll say this in closing, in an effort to make them conscious of their unconsciousness, what the people have to do, the ones who are mostly oppressed, they have to take a different approach. And the only way out of this is to start re-educating the people, letting them know about their sovereign status, let them know what governance and governing is all about, and start begging like beggars to these ministers who are just admin, who simply have one intention, and Mr. Caswell said it all evening, their pension isn't being affected. Their paychecks aren't being affected. In fact, their way of life would not be affected. Only the people and the people who suffer the most are those who feel it. And so I haven't said that. If you want action from the people, Marcia, I'm going to agree with you. Things need to happen. But what needs to happen first? We need to have educational forums so that our people are not destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I yield. Yes, that's awesome. And, you know, um, thank you. Well said. And I think that's what Miss McLean was getting at as well. Um, and this is what um, I don't know if um, anybody heard the beginning of the show. Um, um, Mr. Franklin came on and outlined everything, the issues with the two bills. And Miss McLean came on and talked about how, um, you know, the procedures and how it was done. Um, Lynette came on and added some more. Um, Winston came on and added some more. And I believe, um, Emmanuel, you have a you have a show. You can continue to do that. Um, I'm going to open up my show again tomorrow night to do that because it's not going to happen on the traditional media. So we can talk about education. I, we, you know, we do. You know, you continue to educate. 
but as we educate if we if we say we're not going to do anything until everybody's educated and educated a certain way you know we can use social media social media is what we have you know and to be able to to, to look at the uh, look at the full you know just look at everything and begin to come up with um with action plan uh mr mr franklin has you know he has his those in his union um you know we can we can we can do a press conference and send out information we can there's so many things that can happen on with social media to educate because that's that's what's being used right now you know we, we're not going to get it on on traditional media and we have to find in, in practical ways to get the information out before um mr um mr franklin or um 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 miss mclean um give us a final word someone here i think misunderstood what i was saying she wrote um miss marcia weeks with all due respect do you believe you should be insinuating breaking windows etc as a woman of god instead of leading the people in a peaceful demonstration to get the point across now let me just say to Sharon, marcia, pardon me to point, point to the chair to the chair marcia pardon me if i may let me just briefly say something because i know you are a godly woman let me just say this real quick <laughs> um as you know this is the thing with christians man or people who are not christians when christ said he gonna return he said it's fire and brimstone though we passed the day of the white dove so i'm not suggesting that anybody go breaking any windows i'm sure marcia did not suggest that in any way <laughs> But if you're going to use Christians and Christianity as a point of reference, um, Christ said when he returned, he's going to come up with fire and brimstone. That's not no peace, man. And the reality, the fact is, if we need to answer for the removal of the government, in fact, maybe we should be focusing on the removal of the government and not this particular one bill. That's my two cents, Marcia. I, yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks. Thank you, Emmanuel, because you guys know me very well. I do everything by the book. The police and I, we're good friends. They always compliment us on all of our protests. What I was saying was that if they keep pushing the people, if they keep pushing them, there is a subculture. You've got to open your eyes, guys. Open your eyes and, and see. And, you know, I still try. Listen, I take the bus um, sometimes, Emmanuel. Our car was down for a while. And, and even when the car got back up, I went. I still took the bus. Because when you, you've got to connect with the people. And when you look at those people, Miss McLean, I think I told you, when you take the bus and you look in the eyes of those people, Mr. Mr. Caswell, it's not the same people that I saw when I came to Barbados 20-something years ago. Nobody can tell me it's the same. And that's what I'm saying. You have to be careful. You, you They get up and they're doing things and they're just doing things to people after a time. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying be careful. Okay, that's what I'm what I'm trying to say. I know it's not Jamaica, and I said and I said that for the entire program. Jamaicans will jump off the ledge and then don't know what's happened. Bajan's gonna sit down and calculate it, but let me tell you, Bajan's going to gonna jump off too. I don't believe Bajans are passive. But anyway, over to Mr. Franklin, who has been there so quiet for the, so long. Um, what do you say about the sick out? Is it something that we can leave here saying at least that's one thing that we can do, and then we can you know, um, plan hitting the streets and, and um, Emmanuel is talking about education. We use the social media and our groups and whatever and continue to educate. Miss McLean will is will put out all the points of what what we what we're what we're the issues we have. You know, we have the things we have issues with. What what are your thoughts, Mister um, Caswell Franklin? Before we close, uh, well, you know, I I was one of the proponents of this whole thing. But what I'm going to tell you is that the people that should be more sick not with the national insurance staff because they are going to take advantage of them. You see, in the public service, you have a display process where you, you go through a lot of tears before they can get you out. But you don't have those tears that exist when you have a board. And even then, the, even with the Employment Rights Act, when you get rid of someone, a lot of government departments don't respond to the labor department, don't respond to the, the tribunal, and, and it takes years. So national insurance are the people that should start this, should start this thing out. Trust me, they should be they, their future is the most imperiled of all right now. But you said we we're gonna do some closing, so let me tell you what I want to say. You remember this government when it came in, when they were campaigning for office, this second election they would say. They are safe hands with the Barbados Labour Party and, the, and everybody cares about that kind of nonsense. Well, 
if people believe that, I didn't, but if people believe that, what they are doing now shows that this government has lost all sense of decency. And if they ever had any conscience, they lost that too. What they are doing right now is to take away people's money, but keep theirs. They, 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 they say we're in this together. Everything they open about, they say we're in this together. But I'm not seeing them losing anything. Not seeing them losing anything at all, right? They created this problem. National insurance was on the way back up. But the actions taken by Owen Arthur, when he became prime minister, he realized the national insurance scheme was in problems. And I, I was surprised when the prime minister said that when she became prime minister, she discovered that the national insurance scheme had these issues. Now, could there? She was in Owen Arthur's cabinet. I mean, she wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I got the answer. So she knew. She knew very well. But even though she knew that the national insurance scheme could not afford to lose that one point somebody billion dollars that they took up by the quality, everybody had this little haircut. National insurance could not afford it. They did it anywhere. Then they went and they wrote off a lot of debt that was all the national insurance for people who actually col collected people's money didn't pay in and then you forgive them for it some of them were there some of them were fathers of important people in Barbados, so you're gonna go mm -hmm. after them i even said what's important people by seeing some smiles i'm not saying anything because I, I got i got to protect marcia <laughs> and her show but they did they, they did all of that they imperil the national insurance scheme by their their own actions and now, having imperiled the scheme, having taken the money out of the scheme and given it and donated it and do whatever to do to other people, then they shouldn't, because I said to you earlier that they were trustees of the money. The money was not theirs. It is not government money. National insurance funds are not government funds. But the government is the custodian and the, tr the trustee of that money. And you take, um, as a trustee, you take the money and you spend it how you shouldn't. An individual will go to jail for that. But they can't send jail a government, but they both have committed serious lacks of judgment. For a government behaving like this, they should not remain in office for two more days. This is they, this they, they have they have sold us out. But having done so, they know I expected us to fix it. You took my money that you borrowed from me, and now telling me that I have to pay it back. I, you borrowed my money from me and nobody asking me to pay it back. And you have extended by 50% the amount of time that I could qualify for national insurance. And while we are in this together, they didn't say, well, okay, well, let's deal with ours too. Because you now will qualify in 14 and 14.4 years for national insurance, special pension do it for in, in 10. They used, to they used to qualify for for their pension in eight years, and they're still qualifying in eight years. And you're asking, you're asking me to take to to to, uh, to, 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 to sit down and allow you to do this to me all the time and set up me cares and that they are this together and all kind of nonsense. These people should go. I have no qualms about, I don't want to be, I don't want a far party government, I get to work for that kind of thing. But at the same time, we got a lot of young, bright people out there who don't want to get into politics because the politics is a nasty game and they don't want to get into it. But we are losing. So, mind you, we have the people in the house right now. If they were not in the house, most of them would be unemployed. Couldn't find a job because they don't have any skills in anything. So they have to stay in there and they have to follow the leader. Because if they don't follow the leader, they will not be a minister and they will not be taking home these fantastic salaries in the barbarous setting that they're taking home now. And then they will qualify for their fantastic pensions from age 50 until they die. And not only that, the public servants lost their widows and children's pension in 1980. And peace have not lost theirs yet.
the government repealed the villas and children because if you were a public officer and your wife and you had a wife and young children and you die, there was a scheme in the public service, a contributory scheme to pay a pension to them. Government wiped it out and kept it for themselves. So this has been going on. And mind you, the Barbers their Party did that too. This has been going on and on and on. And people do not know, either they don't know or they don't care or they don't understand that these people are self-serving. But I think this should be the last straw. This should be the last straw. This would be the one that break the camel's back. Because look, you can't tell me that you have seen it fit to lower the pension age from 68 because 68 was too long. And i tell you something. We got people who are hanging on in the public service because a lot of public service departments make people sick. Unhealthy buildings, terrible bosses, and people get sick and they're waiting for retirement. Unless that changes under this new dispensation, people, it, it, it's, people will still be getting sick earlier and wanted to come, come home, but they got to wait for 68. This government did not tell us that they were going to do all of these things that they're doing. That is what a manifesto is for. And if you're going to change everything that you didn't tell us if you're going to change, it should be time for you to come back to the people. You know, that's what manifesto is about. If you look at the investment system, Government publishes a manifesto and the bend the bitch of a party wins, the civil service take the manifestos and start making plans. Not happening in Barbados. A plan comes up when the Prime Minister has a brain wave. Like hearing brain. And then everybody rushes in to support what she is saying. Like she understands. She has so much. But she gets her way because, you know, um, I remember former um minister in the Barbers their party government I was complaining that the that, that the MPs the current MPs didn't have any testicles. I didn't call them that I called them the other word. And he said no 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 they do have them. I said they're not the men. I said they don't got the testicles. He said no they got them. Just like them have got the hair on them. The little boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord <laughs> oh boy Mr Mr Franklin <laughs> <laughs> This is a family so, show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Frank, Mr. Franklin, you know, somebody said, you know, listen to you, not that part, <laughs> but listen to you, make them, they were, they, let them wanted to cry. I think I, I saw that and I tried to put it up, um, you know, because when, yeah, she says, oh dear, um, we're oh, listen to Caswell is making me cry. Because when you look back and you see all that has happened, really, you know, how we've been taken for a ride, um, you know, and uh, it, it's sad. It is sad. Ms. McLean, um, what what, um, what do you want to wanna say to us as we close? And I saw Mr. Um, Clark um, came back in. Um, okay. I let him say something as well. Okay. I want to start by... by um, I made a note while you were speaking, but I want to make a, a comment in relation to what Peter Earl put up there. And I, while he is saying it's true, people may be out there walking up. The beautiful thing about the Marcy, we sure it does not disappear after it's finished for the evening or the afternoon, depending on when the show is there. So it is something that can be and should be shared with persons. I'm happy to see that you had over 500 persons watching. And I also want to, to, to incorporate something that was said by Emmanuel. Basically for me, and I think for those who might have joined the program later and not be sure what it was we were talking about, the introduction of two critical pieces of legislation on Friday, the 28th of July, um, was done in a manner that was that demonstrated gross disrespect to Barbadians. The notion as spread out, spread about by the minister that there was wide consultation on ver uh, with various stakeholders is not consistent with the haste with which the NIS amendment bill was introduced and, and debated. What the workers of Barbados need is full disclosure of what is proposed, how it is going to affect workers, because in relation to national insurance, it is it is the critical information about the change in 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 
um, qualification for the age for, of qualification, but it is also about the operations of national insurance. And therein lies the, the concern, I think Emmanuel raised, raised about privatization. Barbadians cannot forget why in 1967, after passing the legislation in 66, the national insurance scheme was set up. As, as one of the commercial says, it has been and will continue to be the lifeline for Barbadians. Private, in, private pensions and all of those things come and go. Insurance agents sell you all kinds of things. And when you think you know what you bought, you do not know. I would say to Barbadians, do not talk about telling your employers not to before your deductions. It is a scheme that has responsibilities on the part of employees and employers. It is one of the best things that we could have done for the working class people in Barbados. However, and I will not go over what Caswell said, we know the issues of the funds over the years. Um, in fact, as I listen to people try to rewrite history, I will tell people that if they want to understand in the last 15 to 20 years what has happened in National Insurance Fund, go and talk to the former directors. One of them is now a senior public officer, um, having been promoted in, in, into, the, into the direct public service and find out what was done incorrectly. But the scheme is one that is beneficial. Tell us why you're changing it. Unfortunately, the minister himself confessed that in negotiations with the IMF, they have been pressured, this, this is my word, to, 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 to make certain changes. The question I ask, therefore, is are we really operating when we see the government move like this on a timetable or set a timeline set by the IMF as opposed to looking to streamline a system that was introduced, as I said, to be a serious lifeline? What we need to have is a demand for answers, explanations, and revisiting of any elements that perhaps are not in the best interest. Bad decisions were taken on, on and as I, I repeat myself, um, Caswell gave us the details. Almost $2 billion written off is, is a significant amount of money in, in the, in, out of the fund. And it is, it is part of, of a, a, a set of brash decisions that were taken. And I believe that we as Barbadians owe, are owed better explanations. I endorse the whole issue of education. We in Barbados, Caswell and I come from the credit union movement. Uh, I would say 40 years. In my case, he would have been involved before. That has been another area, <laughs> subject for another discussion, that people seem to want to put under pressure. It is about controlling the assets that belong to the people if, if you think in terms of a single pool of resources that belong to the people, national insurance is one of those. And we near, therefore need to, to, to focus on writing anything that is wrong. But as Caswell said, if it is not broke, don't fix it. If it, if it needs strengthening, if it needs greater improvements, fine. But from what I'm seeing, some of this would put resources based on the limited discussion that I heard coming from spokespersons from the government of the day will put this perhaps in greater jeopardy than it is. We need to have this, the people's money protected. And part of doing that is ensuring that we ourselves understand what are the implications for us and to be able to monitor and so on. But I am one to seek solutions. And Marcia knows me very well. Um, and therefore my first course is to ask the government to get to the people and let us know exactly. They didn't debate this bill. There was a statement made by, by the minister um, and, and, and some comments made by the other minister and neither bill would have been treated in a, in a way that um, was required and therefore I think they need to go back to the drawing board, stick a pin and come to the people to talk about what they're supposed to be doing, why, how, and with what effect. And until they do that, pass, because I will guarantee you, Marcy and, and colleagues, that when this bill is passed, and I say when on Wednesday, because we can, we once they, somebody put the thing there, they have the numbers. Passing the bill is one thing. Making the bill work, in other words, once you lift it off the paper and try to translate it into um, administering the piece of legislation, we will see the problems that will arise, whether it is about talking about 
the public servants direct um, specifically in relation to the, the, their, um, the pensions amendment or whether we talk about whole national insurance. And it is critical that we find ways to ensure that what Emmanuel suggests, and I hope I'm, I'm um, citing you correctly, that there is perhaps a plan, not as covert as some people may want to, to think that they have it to privatize what is the significant, or should I say the, the major, the, the only real significant pool of resources belonging to every Barbadian, particularly ordinary Barbadians. And so I think government owes us a lot more in terms of explanation, consultation, and the incorporation of inputs from the people rather than some cursory drive through parishes that they're consulting widely and, and cannot demonstrate to us where they have inserted the, uh, the outcomes or the, 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 the findings or whatever you want to call it, conclusions or ideas from those consultations. Because you negate all of that by coming on a Friday evening when Barbadians are looking to, to go to the supermarket because it's the end of the month party, prepare for two bank holidays and the next one to come and do something like this and not even have sitting in parliament because I tell you, go and look at the optics, go and look at the, vi the videos and see what the optics are like. Not even having the, the, the representatives sit there to appear to be interested in a serious piece of legislation. That is my take, Marcia. Yes. Thank you, um, Ms. McLean. It's an honor um, to have you on, and um, I, I'm so happy. I know I'm going to, uh, um, Winston, I know you're there. Um, I'm so, I just want to, um, those who um, took me on this evening and, and agreed to come on, Ms. McLean, and um, to um, Mr. Franklin, thank you so much for what, you're, what you added and the education for me, um, and I'm sure for everybody who's watching, and um, for Miss um, Lynette Eastman, who came on and, and just so brilliantly gave us that piece of history, which I, I loved it, because um, it kind of put a lot of things in context. And uh, Emmanuel, um, for coming on and for the wisdom that he um, imparted and the push for educating. And I believe once Bajans are educated, they're going to be, they will move. Um, Winston. Um, you, you have the final, final word. So give us, um, share with us and thank you, Winston, for jumping on as well. We so appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you again, Marcia. Um, all I'm going to say is that in asking the government to give us answers, I don't believe they will be forthcoming because we need to be candid with ourselves, right? Um, we know that in raising the age to 68 relative to pensions, that they're just playing for time, all right? They've taken the money from the NIS, and they've, in a couple of years, if we do not put our hands down and stop them, it will be depleted, all right? And the only thing we can do is to take the necessary stand. Emmanuel said that there's the, um, they're going towards privatization. And this has been said, and the facts are there. It is going that way, all right? But we know, you know, we need to take the necessary stand relevant to it. Because if we do not, nobody will be getting any pension. It will get to that. It will eventually get to that, okay? And people mm -hmm. will have worked for years for naught, all right? And I, I keep mm -hmm. saying all the time that we need to instead of reacting to act, okay? Instead mm -hmm. of asking, we need to enforce. Because we are asking for what is right for the ours. You know what I'm saying? We are asking for what is right mm -hmm. for the ours. And that's not the way it's supposed to be done. Okay? What is ours should be given to us. All right? And mm -hmm. I, I know there are many different opinions relevant to what we should do as far as to, to show our displeasure. Okay? But I will ask people, please, to get in contact with you, Marcia. All right? Um, since they know the um, your contact number, you can leave it. And I, I would also say to to um, uh, Mr. Franklin, can they reach out to your to your union as well, or to you as a person? Um, can you, if they want to do the sick out, or they want more information? 
Oh, um, they're already reaching out. I, they're I, already I, reaching out. I, Very good. I'm on, and, and I'm saying some people telling me they're 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 ready. Yeah. So I, some WhatsApp mm -hmm. messages come through. That was but I was rolling down looking at there just when you were talking. These were yeah. people that they're ready. So the, the people they're ready. Born, okay. Ready. Yeah, so ready. I, I, I will I will defer to you and I will pass all information um to you, sir. And I'm sure Emmanuel will get information from his shows and because he's been with a lot of people as well, Winston as well. And we, you know, will gather the gather the information, okay? Um as we as we receive them. Yes, um, continue, Winston. You were closing. No, I was saying. I wanted to do that. I wanted to say that because I, I've been getting messages on my phone as it is right now. So I was trying to defer to you so that we can have you as well, as well. All right. And defer so that we can have a unified body as far as this is concerned and a plan yes. as far as to, how to go ahead. All right. But yes. it's time that we act as opposed to reacting. All right. Yes. And that's Agreed. all I have to say relative to it. All right. Thank you so much yes. for having me on today. Thank you, thank, thank you, you and it's sure. so good to have you and Emmanuel on. You were part of that first team that led that march, that walk that really had the, the government. Um, there was a big and large number of people on the street, and I just want to honor you yourself, Emmanuel, because um, it was a joint effort with um, Bongo Lights, um, you know, Lumumba. I'm just calling names that I remember. I don't know all the names. If you're listening and you are part of it, please forgive me. Um, but I just call in the names I remember that you work together to make that happen. And I see something else is going to um, be, be happening here again. Um, thanks to everybody for joining. You can bet we're going to be on again tomorrow at 7. Because if we're doing something on Wednesday, we're going to keep this going um, until we, 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 we you know, we got to get the, the word out. And I say um, we will talk, Emmanuel, we will have a talk. And we need to use the social media use it and 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 keep pushing it pushing it share this live whatever emmanuel does whatever winston does or whomever has a platform if you have a platform use the platform use your facebook page use your instagram page they can't stop you use it because we cannot get into traditional media um they're, they're, they're not going to take this kind of thing there's no brass stacks to my knowledge in the next two days so we've got to push with social media um those of you who are interested in the issue with haiti i'm going to be on tomorrow morning at nine o'clock speaking to haitians mm -hmm. because they're also um dealing with some issues there where caricom is basically treating them like they're, they're as i put it a bastard child so we're they're coming on to talk about that and the impending i'm calling i'm using a, a word they didn't use it but i'm calling it invasion into haiti that they want to do so we want to look at that and to see what is it that caricom is really saying to haiti so we have some haitians coming on nine o'clock tomorrow on caricom day um tomorrow we're going to be dealing with that and we're going to be back on um the marcia week show back on at seven emmanuel and i will have a chat and um we will discuss some things about you how we can use our social media to continue to get the word out thank you everybody share the live guys share the live this is serious business we mean business it was a call to action all right call to action god bless you all have a good evening bye-bye take care bye-bye